Tonight's topic is called Beautiful Monsters. All praises to the Mosai. Let's open up with the book of Psalms, chapter 39, verse 5. Psalms 39, verse 5. Let's get into this thing. All praises to the Lord this day. Okay, let's get there. Psalms 39, verse 5. Read what you got. The book of Psalms, chapter 39, verse 5. Go ahead. Behold, thou hast made my days as an hundred, as an handbreadth, Come and on. mine age is as nothing before thee. Mm. Verily, every man at his best state is altogether vanity. Selah. You see what Dickin David is saying? He's prophesying in the spirit. He says, verily, every man at his best state is altogether vanity. So what is King David prophesying? He's prophesying that in the last days, you understand, men and women will be what will be faking the funk. That's what he's saying right there. He says, verily, every man at his best state is altogether vanity. Selah. Go ahead. Verse 6. Read. Verse 6. Surely every man walketh in a vain show. They do what? Surely every man walketh in a vain show. Is a surely. So this is a fact. This is not an opinion. It's a fact. Is a surely every man walketh in a vain show. Meaning what? Putting up a front, putting up, putting, putting on a show, acting. They are not sincere. They are not moving in the spirit of sincerity and in truth. They are pretend everything is all good when everything is not all good. Read that again, verse 6. The book of Psalms, chapter 39, verse 6. Go ahead. Surely every man walketh in a vain show. Mm. Surely they are disquieted in vain. Come on. He heapeth up riches and knoweth not who shall gather them. So what is King David saying? He says, everybody walketh in a, in a vain show. He says, everybody in their best estate, they are just faking it. Okay, they walk in a vain show, they put up a they put on a show. You understand? They put on a show, they are rehearsing for Hollywood. You understand? That's what he's saying right there. Now watch this. Get that in John 4. Give me John chapter 4, verse 24. This is what the commandment that this is the commandment right here. This is what Christ said unto us. We which go. The book of John, chapter 4, verse 24. Read. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him, must worship him in spirit and in truth. You see that thing? That's a commandment. It says God is a spirit, I meaning he's a spirit, but he's a spirit that has a body, just like we are spirits and we have physical bodies. The most High God has the same. It's a God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So the Lord, what is the most High God saying? He says, keep it a hundred. Keep it real with me. Don't come up in here faking the funk. That's what the Lord is saying. He says, keep it a hundred. You understand? Because as a people, we like to what? We like to fake the funk. We like to put on a show. We like to put on a front that everything is all good when everything is jacked up. Read that again, verse 24. The book of John, chapter 4, verse 24. Mm -hmm. God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Must. He says must worship him in spirit and in truth. So it's not a suggestion. It's not should worship him. No, must. It's a commandment right there. So let's go back. Psalms 39, verse 6. The book of Psalms, chapter 39, verse 6. Read. Surely every man walketh in a vain show. Mm -hmm. Surely they are disquieted in vain. Come on. He, he, he heapeth up riches and knoweth not who shall gather them. You see that thing? So the Lord is saying, every man walketh in a vain show. Now watch this. The book of Isaiah, chapter 65, verse 5. Go ahead. Which say, stand by thyself. Mm -hmm. come, not, come not near to me. Come on. For I am holier than thou. For I am what? For I am holier than thou. Because that's the, that's, the, that's the same spirit that King David is talking about. That's the same spirit that we read in Psalms 39, verse 5 and 6. Read that part again. The book of Psalms, chapter 65, verse 5. No, Isaiah. Say, Isaiah. Isaiah, not Psalms. Isaiah 65, verse 5. Read. Excuse me, sir. The book of Isaiah, chapter 65, verse 5. Which say, 
stand by thyself, come not near to me, for I mm. am holier than thou. You see that thing? For I am holier than thou. Meaning what? I'm faking the funk. I don't want to do nothing this Bible says. I'm going to just what? I'm going to just going to pretend that everything is all good. Go ahead. These are a smoke in my nose. You see what God is saying? He says, these are a smoke in his nose. They make him sick. Go ahead. A fire that burneth all the day. A fire that burneth all the day. So what is the Lord teaching us? The Lord is teaching us that we must not fake the fun. We must keep it 100. You understand? In this truth. We must move in the spirit of sincerity and in truth. It's not a suggestion. It's a commandment. Okay? Now watch, because, watch this. Think about it like this, right? Because the most like God, when Christ walked the earth, the scribes and Pharisees, they, they thought everything is all good. They acted as if like everything is fine. You understand? They don't need the, they don't need the laws. They don't need to be corrected. They don't need to repent. They know the laws. They don't have to hear anything that Christ has to say. That was the mindset of the scribes and Pharisees. Today, that's the mindset of the Christian church. And that's the mindset of some Israelites I know. Okay, now watch this. Give me the book of, give me the book of Mark real quick. I'm going to show you how Christ dealt with this thing. Mark, okay, give me Mark chapter 2. Give me Mark 2. Mark chapter 2 and verse 17. Watch this. Remember, he was dealing with the scribes and Pharisees right here. What? Watch this. Give me that in, um, you know, instead of this 15. Okay, Mark chapter 2, verse 15. We're going to read down. Come on. The book of Mark, chapter 2, verse 15. Read. And it came to pass that as Jesus sat at meat in his house, many publicans and sinners sat also together with Jesus and his disciples. Read. For there were many, and, and they followed and they followed so him. Now there, there were many of our, our forefathers and foremothers that followed Christ. He says, publicans and sinners. The publicans, these were tax collectors. The sinners, that's obvious. They were breaking God's commandments. He says, they sat with Christ and his disciples. And he says, for there were many and they followed him. You understand? Go ahead. And when the scribes and Pharisees saw him eat with the publicans and sinners, mm -hmm. they said unto his disciples, how is it that he eateth and drinketh with publicans and sinners? You see what they are asking? The scribes and because the scribes and Pharisees, they were think, they were saying, listen, we are on a higher level. You understand? We are up there. So we're not going to come down there and be talking to the commoners. You understand? That's how they were. So it is the Christian pastors today. You understand? So is some brothers and sisters in this truth, they think that they got it together. They don't have to seek counsel. And when you when they seek counsel, they lie, they manipulate, they just fake the funk. Okay, read on. Watch this. Go ahead. Come on. Verse 17. Wait. When Jesus heard it, he said mm. unto them, They that are whole have no need of the physician. So right there. So it says they that are whole, they don't need a physician. So he's being sarcastic. He's chopping them up. It says they that are whole, they don't need a physician. You understand? Go ahead. But they that are sick, mm. I come not to call the righteous but sinners to repentance. Because what was he saying to the scribes and Pharisees? He says, no, no, you are whole. You're perfect. You understand? But guess what? Those were a smoke in his nose, a fire that burned continually. Because he is saying, listen, it says they that are whole in no physician. They no need for a physician, but they that are sick. Meaning those that say, you know what? I've got problems. I'm dealing with stuff. Somebody help me. Those are the ones that Christ says, those are the ones that I want to deal with because those ones, they acknowledge that they have issues and guess what? They need help to deal with their issues. It says, I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. So who was he calling the righteous? The scribes and Pharisees. But were they righteous? No, there was not. But he was being sarcastic. He was cutting them. You understand? Give me Luke chapter 15, chapter 15 verse 7. Luke 15 and verse 7. Watch this. The book of you know, Luke. Hold on. Let's start at verse. Let's start at verse four. Luke fifteen verse four. We're gonna read down. Watch this. Come on. The book of Luke, chapter fifteen, verse four. Mm -hmm. What man of you, 
having 100 sheep, if he lose one of them, does not leave them 90 and nine in the wilderness and go after that which is lost until he find it? So now he's giving a parable. Read verse three, so we understand. Read verse three, come on. The book of Luke chapter 15, verse three. Mm -hmm. And he spake this parable unto them, saying, what man of you having an hundred sheep, if he lose one of them, does not leave the ninety and nine in the wilderness and go after that which is lost until he find it? So now he was teaching them a parable. You understand? And remember, the scribes and Pharisees, guess what were they doing? They were, they were, they were murmuring and complaining against him. Because now what we're reading in Luke, start of verse 1. Watch this, because, because the scribes and Pharisees, they didn't believe. That's why Christ taught in parables, to speak over their heads, because they didn't believe anyway. Now read verse 1. Watch this. Come on. The book of Luke, chapter 15, verse 1. Mm. Then drew near unto him all the publicans and sinners, for to hear him. You see that? So the publicans and sinners drew near unto Christ, because remember what we read in Mark. They followed him. Okay, come on. And the Pharisees and scribes murmured, saying, This man receiveth sinners and eateth with them. He receiving sinners and is eating with them. So, but was Christ kicking it? No, no. Christ, while he was with the sinners, our forefathers that broke the commandments, our foremothers that followed him, he taught them the law because that's what he taught when he was among the publicans and sinners. He taught them God's laws. Okay, but the scribes and Pharisees, they were whole, they were perfect. They didn't need no physician. You understand? Read. And he spake this parable unto them, saying, mm. What man of you, having an hundred sheep, if he lose one of them, doth not leave the ninety and nine in the wilderness, and go after that which is lost, until he find it? Come on, read. And when he had found it, he laid it on his shoulders, rejoicing. So it says, what man of you, he says, you have a hundred sheep. One of the sheep gets lost. He says what? He says, you go after the one that, that got lost until you find it. And when you do find it, he says, he says, he laid upon his shoulders rejoicing. You are, you are glad because you found the sheep that was lost. Go ahead. And when he cometh, and when he cometh home, he called together his friends and neighbors, saying unto them, rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep, which was lost. And the friends and neighbors is talking about his own people. The friends is, is brothers and sisters that keep the commandments. The neighbors is what? Your neighbor, the, the children of thy people, saying unto them, rejoice with me. For because I have found, that's what the word for means, for I have found my sheep, which was lost. Go ahead. I say unto you, that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repented. Now stop right there. It says, I say unto you that likewise, meaning the same way that you have that one sheep that got lost out of a hundred sheep, it says, likewise shall in heaven over one sinner that repents. So the Lord says, one sinner that repents, it says, there's joy up there in the heavens. Go ahead. The book of Luke, chapter 15, verse 7. I Wait. say unto you that likewise, Joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repented. More than over 90 and 9 just persons, which need no repentance. You see what he's saying? He says, that one sinner, that one brother or sister that repents, he says, there's joy in heaven. More than what? He says, more than over 90 and 9 just persons. Because the, the 99 sheep out of 100, out of 100 you understand? Those 99 sheep represent the scribes and Pharisees because those scribes and Pharisees, they were just, but they were just in their own eyes. You understand? Which need no repentance. That's why he said, we said unto them, he said, listen, go back to Mark 2. They didn't need no repentance. You understand? That's why he said what he said unto them. Mark 2. Mark 2 verse 17 again. Okay, come on. The book of Mark, chapter 2 verse 17. Read. When Jesus heard it, he saith unto them, mm. They that are whole have no need of the physician. Come on. But they that are sick, I am I come not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. So the, the righteous is what the righteous is the just persons 
that, no, that need no repentance. Who is he making reference to? The scribes and Pharisees, because the scribes and Pharisees were faking the funk. You understand? They were faking the funk. They were not being real. They didn't keep it real with the Mosai. Neither did they keep it real with the law. Neither did they keep it real with themselves. You understand? They deceived themselves. Okay? That was the problem with the scribes and Pharisees. They were faking the funk. They were beautiful monsters because they beautiful garments. They look bad to the bone outside. You know, they would wear these kung fu fringes. You understand? These beautiful bad garments, but they didn't keep no laws. You see the thing? They look beautiful on the outside, but inside they were a bunch of monsters. Okay, watch this. Give me Luke 20, verse 20. Luke chapter 20, verse 20. Read that for me. Come on. The book of Luke, chapter 20, verse 20. Come on. And they watched him and sent for spies, which should feign themselves just men. Stop right there. You see that part right there? That they is the scribes and Pharisees and the chief priest in verse 19. Read verse 19. So we get it. The book of Luke, chapter 20, verse 19. Mm -hmm. And the chief priests and the scribes, the same hour, sought to lay hands on him. You see that? They... So the chief priests and the scribes, jump down to verse 20 now. The book of Luke, chapter 20, verse 20. Mm -hmm. And they watched him and sent forth spies, which should feign themselves just men. So now, the same way the scribes and Pharisees were faking the funk, guess what? The people, the spies, that the scribes and Pharisees, the watchdogs of the spies, the scribes and Pharisees, guess what they did? They also, they were moving in the same spirit as their what? As the scribes and Pharisees and the chief priests, meaning they were faking the funk. They, that's why it says he sent for, they sent for spies which should feign themselves just men, meaning pretend to be righteous. You understand? That, that, that's, what they, they, that's what the scribes and Pharisees did against Christ. You understand? So they, they sent beautiful monsters just like themselves to fake the funk because they thought they could deceive the son of the most high. Walking on earth, are you kidding? Go ahead, come on. That they might take hold of his words. Mm. That so they might deliver him unto the power and authority of the governor. Meaning because that the power of the authority of the governor took about Rome, Pontius Pilate. Because they're the ones that delivered, that delivered Christ to Pontius Pilate, the Roman authorities. Okay, now watch this. Give me Jude chapter 1 verse 4. Jude. Let's go to the apostle Jude. Jude chapter 1 and verse 4. Watch this. Jude 1 verse 4. Come on. The book of Jude chapter 1 verse 4. Go ahead. For there are certain men cut in unawares. Hmm who were before of old ordained to this condemnation and godly men, mm. turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. You see what it's saying? Is that there are certain men crept in unawares, meaning they've crept in into the congregation and we are unaware of them. That's what the Lord is saying. So those are those that will feign themselves just men. They will, they will fake the funk. You understand? It says, certain men crept in unawares who were, of, who were before of old ordained to this condemnation. These men were, these are all spirits. That's what the Lord is telling us. These are all spirits that are back in these last days. The same spirits that was back then, they are back this day. You understand? Watch this. Give me that in Ecclesiastes real quick. Okay, Ecclesiastes chapter 1. Ecclesiastes chapter 1. Let me see. Ecclesiastes chapter 1 and verse, start of verse 1. We're going to read down. Ecclesiastes 1 verse 1. Come on. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 1 verse 1. Come on. The words of the preacher, the son of David, king mm. in Jerusalem. That's going in. This, this is who's the preacher? King Solomon is the preacher. Go ahead. Vanity of vanities, said the preacher. Vanity of vanities, all is vanity. He says all is just lies, deception. You understand? Because remember, King Solomon had more wisdom than any man that walked the earth, second only to Christ. 
You understand? So he can speak with this. He's, the things that he's speaking, he's speaking things from experience and the wisdom that the Lord bestowed upon him. Go ahead. What profit hath the man of all his labor, which he taketh under the sun? He says, what is the profit you men has labor under which we, we men? What is the profit that men, the man's labor, the man has of his labor that he taketh under the sun? Okay, go ahead. One generation passeth away, and another generation cometh, but the earth abideth forever. So it says, based on what, he, what we read in verse 3 and verse 2, it says, because one generation passeth away, and another generation cometh, but the earth abideth forever. Meaning the earth does not move, the earth is standing still, the earth doesn't rotate, and the earth is not going to go anywhere. But the generations, they don't move. The, the generations... Generations they come and go, unlike the earth. That's what he's saying. So he's comparing generation. Is dealing. He's talking about the generations of men, generations of mankind, spirits of old that kept getting recycled upon this earth. Read. The sun also ariseth, and the sun goeth down. Read. And hasteth to his place where he arose. You see what he's saying is that the sun also ariseth and the sun goeth down. So it's comparing generations of men in verse four to the what? To the sun. The rising of the sun and the setting of the sun, meaning the cycle of the sun. Is that the sun ari also arises and the sun goes down, meaning the sun, the sun, the, the, the sun rises, the sun sets and hasted to his place where he arose. So the sun will move according to the circuit in which he arose. The sun will rotate around the earth. Okay, go ahead. The wind goeth toward the south mm. and turneth ab about unto the north. Come on. It whirleth about continually, and the wind returneth again according to his circuits. According to his what? According to his circuits. According to his circuits. So now he's comparing, comparing the generation of men in verse 4 to the generation to, to the what? To the, to the winds. It says, the wind goeth toward the south and turneth about unto the north. It dwelleth about continually. So the wind blows continually and the wind returneth again according to his circuits. Meaning the wind will move according to the path, the circuitry in, in which it was what it was put in. The, the wind is not going to go into another realm where it's not supposed to be. And just like the sun is not going to go into another realm which is not supposed to be, because that's not how the Lord commanded it. You understand? Go ahead. All the rivers run into the sea, mm -hmm. yet the sea is not full. Come on. And to the place from whence the rivers came, from, from whence the rivers come, thither they return again. So now he's going into what is, is comparing the generation of men to the rivers that run into the sea. He says, yet the sea is not full. You understand? It says, unto the place from whence the rivers come, thither they return again. So guess what? You see the rivers run into the sea, but the sea never overflows. You understand? Because you've got the sun's energy that will hit the surface of the sea, and then there's, it causes what? Evaporation. So everything moving according to its circle, just like the generations of man. They are like that. They come and they go. That's what King Solomon is explaining to us here. Read on. All things are full of labor. Man cannot utter it. The eye is not satisfied with seeing, nor Read. the ear filled with hearing. Meaning, meaning what? You're not going to be able to, you're not going to know everything. You're not going to understand everything. That's why it says no ear, no, no, the ear filled with hearing. Read on. The thing that has been it is that which shall be. Come on. And that which is done is that which shall be done. And there is no new thing under the sun. So now what he's explaining is says the thing is that the thing that has been is that which shall be. Meaning the thing that has been in the past is that which shall be in the future. That which was done in the past is that which shall be done in the future. And there is no new thing under the sun. What is this thing that he's talking about? Get the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 6, verse 10. 
Let's understand what is the thing he's making reference to. Come on. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 6, verse 10. Read. That which has been is named already. Mm -hmm. And it is known that it is man. It is what? And it is known that it is man. He says, that which has been is named already. It is, and it is known that it is man. So the thing in Ecclesiastes 1 is what is the generations of men, the spirits of men. He says, it's named already. It is known that it is man. Go ahead. Neither may he contend with him that is mightier than he. Meaning what? Man may not contend with the most high God that is mightier than him. Because the Lord controls everything. You understand? That's what we're reading here. So now let's go back. Ecclesiastes 1 verse 9 again. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 1 verse 9. Go ahead. The, the thing that has been, it is that which shall be. And that which is done is that which shall be done. And there is no new thing under the sun. Meaning there's no spirit. There's no new spirits on this earth. You understand? That's what he's saying. There's no spirit on this earth that is new. Every spirit that is on this earth has been here before. They've all been here before. Go ahead. Is there anything whereof it may be said, see, this is new? Stop right there. He says, is there anything? We know the thing is the spirit of man. Is there, is there any spirit whereof it may be said, see, this is new? Is there any spirit on this earth that you can say, oh, that's a new spirit on this earth? No, you can't because every spirit, every person on this earth includes the other nation as well. They've all been here before. You understand? Go ahead. It has been already of all time, which okay. was before. It has been, what? It has been already of all time. Mm -hmm. It has been already of all time. Remember what we read in Jude. Don't forget the thought now. It says it had been already of all time, which was what? Which was before us. Which was before us. So all this, when it says which was before us, meaning from the time in the spirit world until when the time when the Lord says, you know what? Let's create man in his own, let's create man in our image and put them upon the earth to inhabit it, to replenish so on and so forth. So what we're reading here is a listen, all the spirits that you see upon this earth, they've been here before. There's no new spirit on this earth. So if you was evil in the past, you're going to be evil in, in, in these last days. If you was righteous in the past, you're going to be righteous in these last days. You understand? You're going to go according to your second. Okay, read on. Verse 11. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 1 verse 11. Come on. There is no remembrance of former things. Mm. Neither shall there be any remembrance of things which are to come with those that shall come after. You see what he's saying? is that there's no remembrance of former things. Meaning what? The spirits, we cannot remember the things that have happened in our past life. We can't remember because the most High God has blocked that understanding from us. So we don't remember. But you experience things like deja vu. There was a Denzel Washington movie that played called Deja Vu. Just watch that movie to understand what is, explained, is being explained here. It's called Deja Vu in French. Okay? So it says, there's no remembrance of former things, neither shall there be any remembrance of things that are to come with those that shall come after. So you cannot remember the things that are going to happen in the future because you come from the past. The Lord has blocked that understanding right now. You understand? So now let's go back to Jude. Okay. Jude verse 4 again. The book of Jude, chapter 4. Chapter 1 is 4. Come on. For there are certain men crept in unawares mm. who were before of old ordained to this condemnation. So these men, these spirits is the spirits of old, the spirits that come from the past. If they were faking the funk in the past, they're going to fake the funk in these last days. They're going to do the same thing evils that they did back then. Those that will, the, the righteous ones will still right, will do righteous things in these last days. You understand? That's what he said right there. Go ahead. Ungodly men. What kind of men? Ungodly men. 
mm -hmm. and godly men. So these certain men that have crept in among us, you understand? God says these are ungodly men. These are not righteous men, but they are ungodly men. Go ahead. Turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness. Meaning turning the grace of our Lord, meaning the death of Christ into what? Into sexual deviancy. Choking the chicken, masturbating. It says they are turning the grace of God into lasciviousness. Evil sexual deviancy. Go ahead. And denying the only Lord God and mm -hmm. our Lord Jesus Christ. And our Lord Jesus Christ. So they are denying our Lord and the Son of God. Okay, jump down to verse 12. Okay, read. The book of Jude, chapter 1, verse 12. Come on. These are spots in your feasts of charity. So these same men that have crept in unawares in verse 4, it says they are spots in your feasts of charity. The feast of charity goes into what? Loving your neighbor as yourself. Brotherly love, brotherly covenant. Give me that in Psalms 133, verse 1. These are spots in your feasts of charity. Psalms 133, verse 1. Let's read that. Come on. The book of Psalms, chapter 133, verse 1. Read. Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. You see that thing? How good and plain and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. That's the charity. That's our feast of charity when we come together to show brotherly love and to glorify the Father which is in heaven, to beautify the Most High. Basically, that's what we're doing. Right now, we're doing the same thing. So go back to Jude, verse 12. Okay, come on. The book of Jude, chapter 1, verse 12. Read. These are the spots in your feasts of charity. Mm. When they feast with you, when they do themselves, what? when they feast with you, they feast with you, meaning how? they love the ceremonial laws. They love the dietary laws because you can always go overboard and satisfy your lust. Um, hope all, greed. You see that thing? It says, it says what? When they feast with you. Because when, when we are feasting, everybody is happy, everybody is excited. You cannot tell, meaning what? It's very hard for people to fake the funk. Although they are faking the funk, even they themselves forget that they are faking the funk. Why? Because everybody's moving in the same spirit. But the Lord is saying, they are right there in the midst of you. You understand? He says, they feast with you, feeding themselves without fear. Watch this. Give me that in John 6, 24. Because Christ talked about these men, these ungodly men and women. Ungodly men and women, because we're dealing with both men and women this day. Beautiful monsters, both men and women. Okay, John 6, verse 24. Come on. The book of John, chapter 6, verse 24. Read. When the people therefore saw that Jesus was not there, neither his disciples, they also took shipping and came to, and came to Capernaum seeking for Jesus. So the people, they were looking for the Messiah. You understand? They were looking for Christ, right? Go ahead. Watch this. And when they had really? found him on the other side of the sea, really? they said unto him, Rabbi, when comest thou hither? They say, Rabbi means master. Master, when camest thou hither? When did you get here? Go ahead. Jesus answered them and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, ye seek me, not because ye saw the miracles, but because ye did eat of the loaves and were filled. You see that thing? He says, the reason why you're looking for me, the reason why you are following me, the reason why you, you are among us is because of what? Is because he did eat of the loaves and were filled. You did eat of the loaves and you were filled. You are not following me for the right reasons, Christ is saying. He's telling them. He says, you are faking the funk because they were following Christ as long as the benefit was there. Once the benefit, the, once, well, once the benefit ends, they also disappear. You see that thing? They are only there for their own occasion. Give me that in Sirach 6. Okay? Ecclesiasticus chapter 6. They are not following Christ because of the miracles and the works that he's doing. No, they are following him for the loaves and for the food. Some, they come for camp. Some come for the camp. 
They come to camp, we go to war, we eat at the end of the camp. Some only come because we, we, have, we have bread, we have fruit and so forth. You understand? Some come because there's these high holiday feasts that God gave unto us. The new moons, the, the high holidays, the feast of dedication, the destruction of Nicaena, Passover, so on and so forth. That's what the Lord is saying. Get that in Sirach 6 and verse, verse, verse 10. Sirach 6, verse 10. You know what? No, verse 8. Sirach 6, verse 8. Okay, read them. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 6, verse 8. For some man is a friend for his own occasion, and not when and will not abide in the day of, of thy trouble. You see what he's saying? He says, for some man is a friend for his own occasion. That's the occasion is what? They did eat of the loaves and were filled. That's the occasion. That's the only reason why they are following, following the son of man. You understand? It says, and will not abide in the day of thy trouble. When trouble comes, now you, you're going through things and so forth. Guess what's going to happen? They want to show their true colors. They will disappear out of your life. They will avoid you. You understand? So on and so forth. You'll start to see that they will start acting strange around you. Why? Because now there's trouble now. That's what Christ is saying right there. Okay. Now, let's go back. John 6. John 6 verse 28 again. I mean, verse 26, once again. The book of John, chapter 6, verse 26. Go ahead. Jesus answered them and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, ye seek me, not because you saw the miracles, but because you did eat of the loaves and were filled. You see what it said? But you did eat of the loaves and were filled. Next verse, read. But this is what he commanded us, that this is where our mindset must be. Go ahead. Labor not for the meat which perisheth. You see what he's saying? He says, don't labor for the meat which perisheth. Because the, 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 the physical food that you eat, those things, they perish. You understand? It's only, the, it's only for your body, that's it. But the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, and the, 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 the spirit of repentance, you understand, is what? That endures forever. That's what he said right there. Read that part again, verse 27. The book of John, chapter 6, verse 27. Mm -hmm. Labor not for the meat which perisheth, but for that meat which endureth unto everlasting life. So the meat which that endureth, and, hold on. The meat that endures unto everlasting life is talking about what? You keep the commandments, you get the kingdom, because that endures forever. And you're going to live forever. Go ahead. Which the Son of Man shall give unto you. Mm. For him hath God the Father sealed. Because Christ is sealed. Christ is just waiting, waiting to receive his kingdom. Who is he waiting for? He's waiting for the 144,000 men. 12,000 men from each tribe that are going to be what? That are going to be joint heirs with him. That's what Christ is waiting for. Understand that thing. This is some heavy stuff right here. Watch this. Um, let's go back. Go back to Jude, okay? Jude verse 12. Read what you got. The book of Jude, chapter 1, verse 12. Go ahead. These are spots in your feasts of charity. Mm. When they feast with you, feeding themselves without fear. He says they are feeding themselves without fear. So they feast with you. They be just nothing, nothing food and all of that. You understand? Saying, oh, shalom, brother. All praises to the most High God you know, a happy feast of dedication and all that. But I don't mean none of it. They don't believe none of this Bible is saying. They're only there because they are only there because they are laboring for the meat that perishes. Go ahead. Clouds, they are without water. He says they are clouds without water. Because you know when it's about to rain and it's all cloudy, you think it's going to rain and it doesn't rain. He says they are like that. It seems that, you know what? They really, they, they're going to bring forth rain, which is wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, and they don't bring it. You see that thing? Clouds without water. So they look the part, but really, they are shallow. Okay, go ahead. Carried about of winds. They are carried about of winds. Give me that in Hebrews 13 verse 9. Carried about of winds. These men, he says, they are carried about of winds. These men and women, they look the part. They, are, they look beautiful on the outside, 
They are beautiful, they are beautiful on the outside, but inside they are monsters. Okay, read Hebrews 13, verse 9. Come on. The book of Hebrews, chapter 13, verse 9. Come on. Be not carried about with diverse and strange doctrines. That's it right there. Don't be carried about with strange, with about with diverse and strange doctrines. Because the wind goes into what? Strange doctrines. Because they are filled with doctrines, not the true doctrine of Christ. You understand? No, they are not filled with that. They are filled with unholy demons. Okay, go back to Jude. Jude, verse 12 again. The book of Jude, chapter 1, verse 12. Mm -hmm. These are spots in your feasts of charity. When they feast with you, feeding themselves without fear. Come on. Clouds they are without water. Yes, carried clouds about. They are, clouds they are without water. Go ahead. Carried about of winds. Carried about of winds, meaning strange and diverse doctrines. Go ahead. Trees whose fruit withereth. Mm. Without fruit. You see that thing? It says trees whose fruit wither because now is harvest season. You seem like, because it seems like it is spring. It's spring season. Spring, that's when things are blossoming and so forth. You understand? You just you start ears coming out and so forth. Then we are all waiting for fruits to come out. The Lord says, it says what? It says trees whose fruit wither it. The fruit withers, meaning their understanding fades. They're meaning what? There's no understanding. It seems like there's understanding, but it's not there. They look the part, but inwardly, they are full of what? They are full of BS. That's what the Lord is saying right there. You understand? It says what? Without fruit. No understanding. There's no fruit of the spirit. Give me that in Galatians 5, okay? Galatians 5 is 22. Let's read that. This is the fruit he's making reference to. Go ahead. The book of Galatians, chapter 5, verse 22. Go ahead. But the fruit of the spirit is love. Great. Joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith. You see that? It says, but the fruit of the spirit is love. Love which is keeping the commandments, teaching the commandments. Joy. We must have the spirit of joy, brothers and sisters. When you see that it's very hard for you to get a laugh, a laugh out, it's difficult for you to laugh, you don't have the, you can't smile and so forth. Listen, you got the devil on peace, long suffering, meaning endurance, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. That's verse 23. So these are the fruits of the spirit right here. But these men and women that have crept in unawares, they don't have the fruit of the spirit. Okay, so let's go back. Jude, verse 12 again. Jude chapter 1, verse 12. Mm -hmm. These are spots in your feasts of charity. Come on. When they feast with you, feeding themselves without fear. Clouds they are without water, carried about of winds. Trees whose fruit withereth, without fruit, twice dead, plucked up by the roots. Meaning they are not rooted in the scriptures, they are not rooted. So they are faking the fun. They look the part though. It says without fruit, twice dead. They were dead in the world. Then they come in, they get resuscitated with the God's laws and they what? Spiritually, they are, physically you are with us, but spiritually you are gone. You are not here with us anymore. Physically we see you, but spiritually you are gone. You are absent. The Elvis has left the building, okay? Plucked up by the roots. You are not rooted in the script. You are not rooted in Christ. You are rooted in the world. You understand? The last of the world, you are rooted in there. That's what the Lord is saying right there. Okay? Now jump down to verse 16. Jude, verse 16. He's going to tell you, these men there's, these men that are, these men and women that have crept in unawares, that are among us, they fake the funk. They are clouds without water. You understand? They says, the trees whose fruit withereth without fruit, twice dead, plucked up by the roots, meaning they are not rooted. The wind will come, it will blow them right out. You understand? Let me show you the characteristics of these men and women. Read verse 16. Watch this. The book of Jude, chapter 1, verse 16. Go ahead. These are murmurers. They are what? 
These are murmurers. These are murmurers, just like the scribes and Pharisees. Because the scribes and Pharisees, they were what? They were hypocrites. They did not keep the commandments. They hated the but they looked the part though. They looked beautiful on the outside, but they were monsters on the inside. So, so these are murmurers. Come on. Complainers. They are complainers. They like to complain. You see that thing? They complain. They complain when we when we having feasts. They complain how long the class is gonna take. They can't wait for the class to be over. You see that thing? They can't wait for us to disperse when we come together as a congregation. Just unholy demons here, just taking over them. He says, these are what? These are members, complainers. These are, these are ungodly men that have crept in unawares, men and women. You understand? Go ahead. Walking after their own lusts. They walk after their own lusts. They don't give a damn about what this Bible is saying. The only reason why they are here is to fulfill their own lust. Whatever the lust may be, whether it's what? I want a job. I want a spouse. I want a husband. I want a wife. I want whatever. I want to improve my financial situation. Whatever the case may be. Once they benefit, if they get the benefit, they leave too. You understand? Go ahead. In their own mouth, speak at great swelling words. You understand? You understand? They, meaning what? Fair speeches to deceive the house of the symbol. Go ahead. You know what? Hmm. No, no, keep reading. Having men's persons in, adm in admiration because of advantage. Now that right there is as having men's persons in admiration, meaning they admire men. You understand? Is as they have men's person in admiration because of advantage. So what is the admiration? It's called compliments. They like to compliment. They will flatter you with words. They are very good on the tongue. You understand? It's as having men's person in admiration because of advantage. Because when they flatter you, they think now they have an advantage over you. That's the men and women that have crept in unawares. You see that thing? That's what we read. That's what Jude is explaining here. The apostle Jude. Okay, now watch this. Now give me the book of Matthew 23, 27. Matthew chapter 23, verse 27. Watch this. The, the complainers, the same complainers that we read about, reading about in Jude, verse 16, there is the same men and women that have crept in unawares. You understand? These are ungodly men and women. Now read what you got. Matthew 23, 27. Read that. Come on. The book of Matthew, chapter 23, verse 27. Come on. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, Hypocrites. Come on. For ye are like unto whited sepulchers. Sepulchre. Because a sepulchre, when we're watching that movie Bond, you understand? Even when you go to some places in the Bundus, Limpopo, Toyando, uh, so on and so forth, you'll start to see that some people they bury them in sepulchres. Like Wawana, when they it's 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 like a very stony place. There's a lot of places in Limpopo like that. So instead of digging a hole in the six feet under, they build a sepulchre and they bury the people in there. So Christ is saying, he says, he says, these men and women, they are like what? They are like whited sepulchres. It's painted, it looks nice on the outside. Go ahead. Which indeed appear beautiful outward. Which indeed did what? Which indeed appear beautiful outward. He says, which indeed appear beautiful outward. So these are beautiful monsters. They are beautiful on the outside. Go ahead. But are within full of dead men's bones. Come on. And of all uncleanness. You see what the Lord is saying? This is Christ speaking, by the way. He says, but within, on the inside, their spirit is not right. Their personality is messed up. You understand? They look good on the outside, but the personality is a mess because they don't apply the scriptures. They're focusing on the cosmetics, but they don't care about how to fix on the inside. You understand? Beauty, is we, beauty comes from within, especially when it comes to God's laws. When the inside starts to become good, you start to see on the outside. Your personality starts to change. Your demeanor starts to change. The way you look, your skin, you understand? So whatever the case may be. 
Okay. Now, it says, they are full of dead men's bones and of all uncleanness. Because these are ungodly men and women that have crept in in the congregation unawares. Their spirits just pop up every now and again and say, that wicked Negro right there, that brother ain't right. That sister is not right. Something wrong with that brother. Something wrong with that sister. You understand? So that's what we read here. Beautiful on the outside, but within they are monsters. Next verse. Go ahead. Verse 28. Hmm. Even so, he also outwardly appear righteous unto men. Come on. But within ye are full of hypocrisy and iniquity. We are full of hypocrisy and sin. So it says, outwardly appear righteous unto men. Clouds, they are without water. Trees, but they don't bear no fruit. They can pop out flowers and so forth, but the fruit will never come out. So it says, but within, ye are full of hypocrisy and iniquity. So faking the funk, you understand? Now watch this. Give me, give me the book of 1 Timothy 3. Give me 1 Timothy 3 verse 1. Let's read it. First Timothy chapter 3, verse 1. First book of Timothy chapter 3, verse 1. No, no. This is a true saying. No, no, no. Hold if on, a on. man... Wait, wait, wait. Second Timothy, I'm sorry. Second Timothy. Okay. Second Timothy 3. Second book of Timothy, chapter 3, verse 1. Go ahead. This know also that in the last days, perilous times shall come. He says, this know also that in the last days, perilous times shall come. Perilous times is dangerous times. That's the time we're living in, in these last days. You understand? Go ahead. Come on. For men shall be lovers of their own selves. Stop right there. For men shall be what? For men shall be lovers of their own selves. Now I'm going to deal with the brothers now. It says, for men shall be lovers of their own selves. Men will be lovers of their own self. They're going to love themselves. You understand? Read that verse again. Second book of Timothy, chapter 3, verse 2. Mm -hmm. For men shall be lovers of their own selves. Stop right there. We want to deal with that part. He says, because the perilous times is that one of the signs of the perilous times, meaning dangerous times, unstable times, it says one of the signs will be that men will be lovers of their own selves. They're going to be in love with themselves. They're not going to give a damn about the nation. They're not going to give a damn about the congregation. They're not going to give a damn about the brothers and the sisters in the community. They're not going to give a damn about that. They're only going to give a damn about their own selves. Now watch this. Now let me share my screen. I want you to read that definition right there. Narcissism. Okay, tell, tell us where you're reading. Reading from etim, etim on, etimonline.com. Etimonline.com. Go ahead. Narcissism. Noun. Mm. 1905 from German Narcissismus. Come on. Coined 1899 in. By German. Okay, just read the, the outside the parentheses by German one. By German psychiatrist Paul Nack, 1851 to 1913. So this term was coined in 1899. Go ahead. On a comparison suggested 1898 by Havelock Ellis from Greek, from Greek Narcosot. Narcissus, name of a beautiful youth in mythology. Name the name of a beautiful youth in mythology, meaning Greek mythology. Okay, now read on. Who fell in what? Who fell in love with his own reflection in mm. a spring and was turned to the flower Narcissus. Narcissus. So this man. It says he fell in love with his own reflection in a spring and was turned to the flower Narcissus. So this man was, he was in love with his own reflection. He couldn't stand to look at himself. You see that thing? That's what we read in here. Narciss it says you're going to see narcissistic tendencies 
in these last days. Read the verse again. First, second Timothy 3 verse 2. Come on. Second book of Timothy chapter 3 verse 2. Read. For men shall be lovers of their own selves. You see that thing? Men shall be lovers of their own selves. That's what we're reading here. Narcissism. A man who fell in love with his own reflection. He fell in love with his own reflection. Now, go back to the definition. Uh, start from there. Narcissus himself, as a figure of self-love, is attested by 1767. So is this self-love really? No, this is self-obsession. He was extremely obsessed about himself. That's what we're reading right here. You understand? Now, let's go outside of that. Let's X out of that. Okay. Now go back to 2 Timothy 3, verse 2 again. Second book of Timothy, chapter 3, verse 2. Mm. For men shall be lovers of their own selves. Stop right there. Jump down to verse 3 now. Second book of Timothy, chapter 3, verse 3. Mm. Without natural affection. Stop right there. So men that are lovers of their own selves, they don't have natural affection. They have unnatural affection. They have an unnatural affection towards their own self-image. You understand? It says without natural affection, because what they are lovers or they love their own selves. They don't love the most high. They don't love God's people. You understand? They won't fight for this gospel. They won't fight for this truth, no matter what it takes. They won't do it because they love themselves too much. So when you don't submit yourself to the leadership, guess what? You love yourself too much. You don't follow instruction. You are in love with yourself. What is that called? Idolatry. You are your own idol that you created and now you are worshiping yourself. You see this? That's what's going on this day. I'm dealing with the men. I'm not dealing with the sisters right now. I'm dealing with men. Now watch this. Here's another trait. Here's another trait of narcissistic behavior. Some of you have counseled because when I talk to you, I can tell. You know when you, when you are given counsel? While you are given counsel, you try to be a smart mouth. You think you know better. You think you know too much, but you're calling me up for counsel. What the hell is this? You understand? It's called a woman's spirit. Some of you have that spirit. You have a woman's spirit. You understand? You get counseled. You just ignore it. You don't apply it. Me, I just leave you. Why? Because you know too much. You understand? You are, you are, you'll be left to your own devices. Understand that thing? Because you're going to turn around and point the finger at leadership and so nobody I ask counseling from leadership. No, you did not. So some of you, you even women have more balls than you. I'm going to tell you straight. Some of you, the sisters have more stones than you. Okay, now watch this. Now, let's get some examples of what that means. Men shall be lovers of their own selves without natural affection. Watch this. Give me, give me the book of 2 Samuel chapter 14. 2 Samuel chapter 14 and verse 24. You know what? Mm, before you get there, give me Sirach 11 verse 2. Sirach chapter 11 verse 2. Remember, we're still dealing with men shall be lovers of their own selves. Let's see what the scripture says. Read that. Sirach 11 verse 2. Come on. Of Ecclesiasticus chapter 11 verse 2. Read. Commend not a man for his beauty. Stop right there. He says, don't commend a man for his beauty. But this man right here that we're reading about, the one that is in love with his own reflection, is a narcissist. It's all about him, 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 him. He don't care about the nation. It says what? It says, don't commend a man for his beauty. Go ahead. Neither abhor a man for his outward appearance. Don't hate a brother for his outward appearance. The Lord, because the Lord doesn't look on the outside. He looks at the spirit, the spirit that you're rolling in. That's where the, the so-called Christians, they get it from. No, God looks at my heart. You understand? But he doesn't look at the heart of a, of a so-called Christian in the Christian church or brothers and sisters that have crept in unawares that are faking the funk. No, he's not looking at you because your mind is wicked. You understand? Watch this. Now, get Romans 8 verse 6 because... If you focusing on the outward appearance, 
meaning that's your defining, because I'm not saying when you have to prove a sister, when you have to prove a brother, I'm not saying there's not going to be some, some sort of physical attraction. Of course they will be. So don't, don't misunderstand what I'm saying. Okay, now read that. Romans 8 verse 6. The book of Romans chapter 8 verse 6. Read. For to be carnally minded is death. You see that? When you are carnally minded, you're going to look for carnal things. You'll, fight, you'll, you'll focus on these th the things that are carnal, not the things that are in the spirit. You understand? You're not going to focus on those things. You're not going to focus on those things. You understand? The most I don't look at them. The Lord looks, looks at your spirit. Now watch this. Read that part again, verse 6. The book of Romans, chapter 8, verse 6. For to be carnally minded is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. You see what the Bible is saying? To be carnally minded is death, meaning you are spiritually dead. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. You're going to have life. You're going to have peace because your mind is stayed on the Lord. Jump up to verse 5. Watch this. The book of Romans chapter 8 verse 5. Come on. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. You see that thing? If you are after the flesh, you're going to mind the things of the flesh. That's meaning what? That's going to be your main focus. Your main and only focus will be on the outside. You're not going to check the spirit. You're not going to look at the spirit. You'll focus on the outside. Go ahead. But they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. Meaning what? They're going to judge things according to what the Bible says, not how somebody looks on the outside. You're not going to look at that. We're not saying because I mean, it's given. It's a given. We are beautiful people on this earth. We are the most beautiful people on earth. That's a given. You understand? But guess what? A lot of, a lot of us, we use our beauty to manipulate. We use our beauty to get away with things. We use our beauty to what? To go around things. You see that thing? We use our beauty to our advantage to a fault. That's the point. You understand? That's what it means to be carnally minded. Now give me 2 Samuel chapter 14, verse 25. Watch this. I'm going to give you, let's get some examples, okay? 2 Samuel chapter 14, verse 25. Now, this is King David's son, Absalom. Okay, now watch this. Read it. 2 Samuel chapter 14. Chapter 14 and verse 25. Go ahead. 2 Book of Samuel chapter 14, verse 25. Read. But in all Israel, there was none to be so much praised as Absalom for his beauty. For his what? For his beauty. So this brother right here, he was like mm, uh, Denzel Washington. He was like, you know, the, you know what, you know, anybody, anybody remember that show, uh, Prison Break? You see that yes, brother sir. that played the, the, the main actor? You know how many women um, actually used to watch that show because of that brother? Because he's a brother. His father is black. He's, he's a Judah. He's Jew. He's Judah. So they used to look at that brother and they'd be like, that's the reason why I'm watching them. You understand? They'd be looking at the other actors and all of that, in that on that show, but he was the main one. The beauty and the brains. You understand? So read that again. So he was like the Absalom. Watch this. Read verse 25 again. Second book of Samuel, chapter 14, verse 25. Read. But in all Israel, there was none to be so much praised as Absalom for his beauty. You see that thing for his beauty. And you sisters, you be looking at that. No, he's tall, dark and handsome. He's got muscles and so forth, but he's a monster. But because you are focusing on He's got big feet. He's tall. That means his his rod is proportional. Because that's how they do the calculation. I don't know where they get the formulas from, but they have. They seem to have these mathematical equations on how to measure this stuff. That's the mindset again. So that's how they look at this because they are carnally minded. So it says there was. It says, but in all Israel. Now let's think. It says in all Israel. All twelve. Now, this is millions of us, right? In all Israel, it says there was what? But in all Israel, there was none to be so much praised as Absalom for his beauty. 
So this, that means this brother was bad to the bone. He was a handsome brother, but he was more handsome than among in all Israel. He says that no one, no one, no, nobody compared to this brother. Nobody compared to this brother right here. He says in all Israel. Okay, go ahead. Come on. That means women were flocking to this brother right here. He won, he won the hearts of the women in Israel. You understand? Go. Yeah, probably even the men too. Go ahead. From the sole of his foot, mm. even to the crown of his head, there was no blemish in him. Hold on a second. He says, this brother, he says what? He says, from the sole of his foot, even to the crown of his head, he says, there was no blemish in him. This brother did not have no pimple, no scar. His hair was perfect. His skin was perfect. Listen. He was smooth like a, like a baby's bottle. You understand? He didn't have teeth that were coming out that he needed braces. He didn't have none of that. His breath wasn't stinking. He didn't have none of, he didn't have none of those problems. So he, was, he didn't have a flappy gut. He didn't have none. He was not shapeless. Okay? He was in shape. Hmm? Watch this. Give me that in Daniel. <laughs> Give me Daniel 1 verse 4. Watch this. Daniel chapter 1, verse 4. Hmm? Some of us, we go to camp, you come back, your skin starts to peel because of the sun, you see. So Absalom wasn't like that. Okay, get that. Daniel 1, verse 4. Come on. The book of Daniel, chapter 1, verse 4. Read. Children in whom was no blemish, hmm. but well favored. Stop right there. Is his children in whom was no blemish. So Absalom was black and beautiful. Excuse me. Absalom was black and he was beautiful. He was black and was beautiful. He was proud. Mm -hmm. Black power. Now let's go back. Second Samuel 14. Okay. Second Samuel 14. Read verse 26. Second book of Samuel, chapter 14, verse 26. Go ahead. And when he pulled his head. Stop right there. It was, Hold on. It says when he pulled, he said, to pull means to cut. To pull means to cut, to trim the edges of your hair and so forth. Go ahead. For it was at every year's end that he pulled it. So at, at, the, end of, at, at the end of 12 months, he would cut his hair. You understand? He's going to tell you why. Go ahead. Because the hair was heavy on him. The hair was heavy. Read. Therefore, he pulled it. So what type of hair is this? That was so heavy. I mean, he's like, because he, that's not, this is not, an, this is not an afro. Okay, this is not an afro. You understand? It says, because at, at the end of every year, he pulled it because the hair was heavy on him. You understand? Therefore, he pulled it every 12 months. Go ahead. He weighed the hair of his head at 200 shekels after the king's weight. You see that? So this brother had, had a lot of hair. You understand? He had a lot of hair, this brother, Absalom. So what type of hair did he have? Give me that in um, Song of Solomon. Give me Song of Solomon, okay. Song of Solomon 5 and verse 5. Read that. Song of Solomon. Chapter 5. No, no, verse 10. Verse 10. Verse 10. Song of Solomon, chapter 5, verse 10. Go ahead. My beloved is white and ruddy, the mm. chiefest among 10,000. Go ahead. His head is as the most fine gold. Read. His locks are bushy and black as a raven. He says, his locks are bushy and black as a raven. So, Absalom, he had dreadlocks. You understand? Absalom had dreadlocks like soldier Samuel. He had dreadlocks. So he had such, his hair was growing so fast, so quickly that at the end of the year, he had to go and cut it off. So you see those brothers that have dreadlocks that get to the foot? Those type of brothers. So Absalom was like that. So every year, he would have to go and cut it. He says it weighed what? It weighed 200 shekels after the king's weight. 
So this brother was, was handsome in every way. Beautiful hair. He didn't have the hair, the type of hair that we have. You understand? You know, the, my hair don't grow. The hell is this? You see that thing? So Absalom wasn't like that. You understand? So this guy was a beautiful brother. You understand? Keep reading. Go ahead. Come on. His eyes are as the eyes of doves by the rivers yeah. of waters. So you see he was charming the sisters. Go ahead. Washed with milk and fitly set. Oh, what does you have? Verse 12, sir. No, 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 no. Not verse 12. What? No, no. Second Samuel 14. Excuse me, sir. Wait, what were you reading? Oh, Psalm wait, Psalm. You still... Okay, let's come back. Let's come back. Second Samuel 14. Read verse 27 now. Second book of Samuel, chapter 14, verse 27. Mm -hmm. And unto Absalom there were born three sons and one daughter, whose name was Tamar. She was a woman of a fair countenance. Because he's, she, he's, she's taking after who? Her father. Because remember, it says in verse 25, it says her father was beautiful. You understand? So Tamar, the daughter of Absalom, is that she was a what? She was a she was a woman of a fair countenance. You understand? Because she was taking after who? After her father. Go ahead. So Absalom dwelt two full years in Jerusalem and saw not the king's face. So because he had not seen his father yet. You understand? Read. Therefore Absalom sent for joy to have sent him to the king. Mm. But he would not come to him. And when he sent again the second time, he would not come. So now Absalom is sending Joab to go to the king on his behalf. You understand? To make sure that he wants to see the king. Because remember, it says he had not seen the king. So now he's getting Joab to go and, and speak to the king that he's, he's coming to see the king. You understand? So he called for Joab twice. Watch what happens next. Verse 8, come on. Therefore he said unto his servants, See, Joab's field is near mine, mm. and he hath barley there. Go and set it on fire. Stop right there. Wait, wait, what? Go and set it on fire. So why is he setting the brother's field on fire for? Why is he doing that? Because he's a monster. You see, most guys are unpredictable here. I mean, he called the brother twice. The brother did not come to go and uh, meet the king so he can pave the way for to go and meet the king. So because he didn't, he said, okay. He says, he sent for his servants. He said, okay. And Joab, he says, he had barley in the field to take care of his family and so forth. He says, go set it on fire. I mean, he destroyed that man's livelihood. Okay, go ahead. And Absalom's servants set the, set the field on fire. They set Job's field on fire. Who does that? A monster. A beautiful monster. Unpredictable. Crept in unawares. Ungodly man. You see what we're reading? That's what the scriptures is be saying right there. You understand? So Absalom had a crazy demon. He was beautiful to look upon on the outside. But inwardly, he was, a, he was full of dead men's bones. He had, he, his, his body was like a white sepulcher. But his spirit, he was what? He was full of the devil. Because why does he? This is no reason for you to send a man's field on fire. You understand? What is he going to eat? What is he going to give to the Levites? Hmm? Watch this. Now, give me 2 Samuel 15 verse 2. Second book of Samuel, chapter 15, verse 2. You know what? Get Second Samuel 14, verse 33. Then we're going to jump to 15. Okay, come on. Second book of Samuel, chapter 14, verse 33. Wait. So Joab came to the king and told him. And when he had called for Absalom, he came to the king and bowed himself on his face to the ground before the king. And the king kissed Absalom. Now, at this point, the king now 
uh, this is his father, this King David. Okay, he says the king, and the king kissed Absalom, his son. Now, what, what I want to show you here is this. Here's a here's thing that you want, I want you, I want you, brothers and sisters, to observe. Jump up to verse 80. I want to show you something. Uh, Second book of Samuel. Read, read, hold on. Read 29 and 30 together. Second book of Samuel, chapter 14, verse 29. Go ahead. Therefore, Absalom sent for Joab to have sent him to the king, but he would not come to him. And when he sent again the second time, he would not come. Read. Therefore, he said unto his servants, See, Joab's field is near mine, and he hath barley there. Go and set it on fire. And Absalom's servants set the field on fire. So now you have to think about this, right? Absalom, he was willing to destroy a man's livelihood just so he can get what he wants. Do you see this? So was he applying the royal law? No, he did not apply the royal law. He hated his own people. Because he hated his father and he hated the men and women around him. You understand? His family too. Because he was willing to destroy a man's family just so he can get what he wants. You see that thing? So for him to take to jump that far to set a man's field on fire, what does that mean? Absalom had a violent spirit. Yeah. Absalom was a violent Negro. He had a violent and a demon. He had a, he had a violent demon on him. That's why he was able, he was willing to do this to the brothers, uh, the brothers, the brothers like me. You see that thing right there? Anybody see that? Yes, sir. Okay, now watch this. Give me that in James, okay? Give me James. James 2. Let's read that. James 2, verse 8. James chapter 2, verse 8. Let's read that. The book of James, chapter 2, verse 8. Go ahead. If ye fulfill the royal law according to the scripture, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself, ye do well. So now, Joab didn't love his neighbor as he loved himself. He didn't have that spirit of charity. He didn't have that. You understand? He had an unholy demon in him. So now watch this. Get that in Leviticus 19. Leviticus chapter 19, okay. Leviticus 19, verse 18. You know what? Read 17 and 18 together. I'm going to show you the spirit of Absalom, okay? The book of Leviticus chapter 19, verse 17. Read. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. Come on. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor and not suffer sin upon him. Read. Thou shalt not avenge nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people, but thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. I am the Lord. You see what the Lord is saying right there? It says, thou shalt not hate thy brother in thy heart. Don't hate your brother in your heart. Absalom did that. He did not apply the royal law. You understand to Joel. Verse 18 says, Thou shalt not avenge nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people, but thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. I am the Lord. He didn't do that. He avenged his brother. You understand? He, be, he, had, he had a grudge against his brother, so much so that he was willing to set his field on fire. You see that thing? So Absalom had a violent spirit on him. Watch this. Give me that in First uh, Peter's. Give me first Peter's, okay? Give me first Peter's chapter three. Give me first Peter's three and verse seven. I'm gonna show you something with this. This right here, I'm dealing with the men, okay? Watch this. Now, this goes for the married brothers and the unmarried ones. It's the same applies. Watch this. Read what you got. First book of Peter's chapter three, verse seven. Come on. Likewise, ye husbands, dwell with them according to knowledge giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel. Read. And as being heirs together to the grace of life, that your prayers may, that your prayers be not hindered. You see what the Bible is saying? It says, likewise, ye husbands, 
dwell with them, that them is your wives according to knowledge. So you deal with your wife according to the laws of God. You understand? You deal with it according to the scriptures. Watch this. Give me Ephesians 5 real quick. Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 28. He says, likewise, he has been dwell with them according to knowledge. Watch this. This is what it means right here. Come on. The book of Ephesians chapter 5 verse 28. Come on. So ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. Mm. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. You see what the Bible is saying? So ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. Because if you love your wife, you love yourself. So what you are doing is as deal with your wife according to knowledge. Guess what? It says you must love your wife as you love your own body because you, the two of you, you are one flesh. You understand? When you do something out of the spirit, she, it will affect her. When she does something out of the spirit, it will affect you. So before you make decisions, you must always think, how is this going to affect my family? You understand that? You must think about those things. That's why it says, deal with them according to knowledge. What is the knowledge? God's laws. You must deal with your wife according to the scriptures. You don't want to put hands on your wife. You understand? You don't want to verbally abuse your wife. Because some of you brothers do that. Some of you brothers have that spirit, that violent spirit. You understand? You understand? Verbal diarrhea. You have that. You have only verbal diary. So the Lord says, deal with them according to knowledge. You understand? Get that. Let's get the law. Get the book of Deuteronomy real quick. Deuteronomy chapter 22. Deuteronomy chapter 22 and verse 14. Read that. The book of Deuteronomy. No, start of verse 13. Start of verse 13. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 22 verse 13. If any man take a wife and go in unto her and hate her. You take your wife, you understand? You deal with your wife according to husband and wife, but now you start to hate and despise your wife. Go ahead. And give occasions of speech against her. Uh -huh. And bring up an evil name upon her. Stop right there. It says, and give occasions of speech against her and bring up an evil name upon her. Meaning what? Verbal abuse. You see what he's saying right there? Verbal abuse. Go ahead. And say, I took this woman, and when I came, and I and when I came to her, I found her not a maid. Meaning what? She's a hoe. Okay. So, but the point here is, is going into what? Verbal abuse. You understand? Because you upset. Now, because you want to make yourself feel better. Because of something she might have said, you return evil for evil. Instead of opening the scriptures to deal with the problem, you understand? You would rather do what? You close the Bible, you put out this verbal diary. You understand? Now you start to do things just to head the sister back. You see that thing? No, we cannot move like that. Okay, let's go back. Ephesians 5, verse 29. Read that. Book of Ephesians, chapter 5, verse 29. Come on. For no man ever yet hated his own flesh, but nourisheth and cherisheth it, even as the Lord the church. You see what he's saying? So he says, No man ever hated his own flesh, but you nourish and cherish it, even as the Lord the church. So you must do the same with your wife because the two of you are one flesh. Okay. Now go back to first Peter's. First Peter 3, read verse 7 again. First book of Peter, chapter 3, verse 7. Come on. Likewise, ye husbands, dwell with them according to knowledge, giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel. Because she is the weaker vessel. Sometimes you have, we have to be patient with the sisters. But sometimes the patient runs out. Understand that too. Okay, go ahead. And as being heirs together of the grace of life, that mm. your prayers be not hindered. You see that thing? It says because you are heirs together to the grace of life. You are heirs together. So the blessing that you're going to get, the wife will get. Because guess what? 
That blessing is the blessing that was given to our forefather Abraham in Genesis 17. You understand? So that, that your prayers be not hindered. That your prayers be not hindered. Now keep reading. Verse 8. Come on. Finally, be ye all of one mind. You must be of one mind. Read. Having compassion one of another. You must have compassion for your wife. Because you know, the verse 7 says, she's the weaker vessel. So sometimes you understand that, you know, some sisters are slow. They slow, they, you know, they slow bits. Okay. But the scripture tells you, don't take a light woman. Go ahead. Love as brethren. Be pitiful. Be courteous. Now watch this. Verse 9 is the one I want to deal with. Go ahead. Not rendering evil for evil. That's it right there. He says, don't render evil for evil. Because some of you husbands, you might find yourself that you, your sister says something or done something to you. Instead of actually dealing with it according to knowledge, like the scripture says, you're going to return the evil, you're going to return the evil unto your wife, rendering evil for evil. Now, you are even more, you're, now you are a simple because you didn't open the scriptures to deal with that so that you can do what? You can correct your wife according to the scriptures. Instead, you return evil for evil. Go ahead. Or railing for railing. Back and forth. You understand? Read. But contrary wise blessing. Read. Knowing that ye are there unto call, that ye should inherit a blessing. Because you both of you, when the husband receives the blessing, the wife will receive the blessing. The children will receive the blessing. That your prayers be not hindered. You see that thing right there? Now, watch this. Because the reason why I'm going to um, uh, Second Samuel in terms of the royal law, loving your, 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 loving your wife, you understand, according to knowledge. So what does that mean? Because... The reason I'm bringing this up is because when you look at the character of Absalom, he was willing to destroy a man's life, livelihood, because he had an unholy and unclean demon on him. You understand? He said the man's field on fire. So he had a, he had a what? He did not have charity. He did not love his neighbor like he loved himself. He didn't have that. You understand? So what was Absalom's character? He was manipulative. He was manipulative. So, yes, they look beautiful on the outside, but some brothers, they are very manipulative. They will manipulate the hell out of you. You understand? So when you're proving, sisters, you have to watch those type of traits. You understand? Don't, get, don't be deceived by the outward appearance, like the scripture says. You understand? You must check those traits. Is he manipulative? Does he have a violent spirit on him? When he does not get what he wants, even during the, especially during the proving process, how does he move? What does he do? You must check those issues to see what's going on. Do you understand? To see how he deals with matters and so forth. Now watch this. Now, manipulation, that's one of the, that's one of the tactics. So you have to watch that. Very manipulative. Somebody that's manipulative, that means emotionally and verbally, they are going to abuse you. So they go hand in hand. So you must watch that type of Negro. Okay, now watch this. Get 2 Samuel chapter 15, verse 2. 2 Samuel 15, verse 2. 2nd book of Samuel chapter 15, verse 2. Read. And Absalom rose up early and stood beside the way of the gate. And it was so that when any man that had a controversy came to the king for judgment, then Absalom called unto him and said, Of what city art thou? Read. And he said, Thy servant is of one of the tribes of Israel. He says, I'm one of the tribes of Israel. You understand? I'm also part of the 12 tribes. You see what he's saying right there? I'm a Jew. I'm one of your brethren. That's basically what he's going into. Right? And Absalom said unto him, See, Thy matters are good and right. Mm. But there is no man deputed of the king to hear thee. You see what he's saying? So now he's intercepting the brothers and sisters that are going to the, to the king to get cancer. 
he's intercepting them. So because he's saying, see, their matters are good and right. Yeah, you are right in what you want to say. But there is no man deputed to the king to hear them. Nobody is second in charge to the king that is going to uh, that's going to listen to you because by default, what is he saying? The king is not going to listen to you. And if he does, he's not going to what? He's not going to he's not going to judge righteous. That's what he's saying about his own father. Absalom hated his own father. You understand? Go ahead. Absalom said, moreover, oh, that I will make judge in the land. Mm. That every man which hath any suit or cause might come unto me, and I will do him justice. You see that thing? So now he's saying, listen, I wish I was the judge in Israel. That's some of you. That's how you think. You see certain things that are done. In your mind, you think, I can do it better. Shut the hell up, Negro. Sit in some corner somewhere. Okay? Sit in some corner somewhere. Okay? He says, Absalom said, moreover, all that I will make king in the land, that every man which have any suit or cause might come unto me, and I would do him justice. Meaning what? Me, I would have done it different. Shut the hell up. You understand? Shut the hell up and sit your ass down. Excuse my French. Because a lot of the times is that brothers, they seem they have that spirit where you think, no, I, I can do it better. This is the most I don't look at that. You brothers that think that, you brothers that say that within yourself, the most that God will put you to the side, will raise a stone in your place. Understand that. Let me put that spirit out there. Okay. Now watch this. Keep going. Read on. Verse 5. Mm. And it was so that when any man came nigh to him to do him obeisance, he put forth his hands and took him and kissed him. You see that thing? He was battering them. So what was he doing? He was manipulating them. So some of you brothers, you are very manipulative. And when you do get the day you decide to get married, I feel sorry for the sister if you don't get rid of that spirit. That spirit of manipulation. You understand? That manipulative spirit. You understand? Compliments. I mean, you're not going to flatter me with those. Okay? I mean, listen, listen I, that's like I'm a duck when it comes to that stuff. It will just slide right off. Okay? Compliments and all that. Flattery of the tongue. Mm -mm. You're not going to, listen, that's not going to work up here. But some brothers, they have that spirit. And you sisters, you going to what? You will be enticed by that type of nigger. You are going to be enticed because the Lord told you in Jude verse 16 says, these are members and complainers. That's their character. They member, they complain, they manipulate, they are violent. That's the spirit they're rolling in. You understand? Ray. And on this manner did Absalom to all Israel that came to the king for judgment. You see what he did? He says, all Israel that came to the king for judgment, Absalom did that. He was kissing their hands. He was buttering them up. You understand? Puffing them up. Ray. So Absalom stole the hearts of the men of Israel. You see what he did? He stole them. He stole, he says, he stole the hearts of the men of Israel. So this was not done in sincerity and in truth. He had to manipulate, deceive, move in the spirit of what? Move like a snake. You see that thing? Now, watch this. Jump down to verse 11. Second book of Samuel, chapter 15, verse 11. Go ahead. And with Absalom went 200 men out of Jerusalem that were called and they mm. went in and they went in their simplicity and they knew not anything. So now you've got 200 men out of Jerusalem that were called unto Absalom. He says, and they went in in their simplicity. So they followed Absalom because these were simps. You see that? These were simps and they knew not anything. You sisters, you're looking at the outward appearance but the brother is a bum. He is dumb and he's a bum. He don't study. He don't know the scriptures. But he look good on the outside. You understand? So now you're going to be stuck with a dumb, with a dumb tall Negro for the rest of your life. 
that's a miserable that that that's a miserable life right there that you are going to have sister understand that that's what the lord is trying to show us because these 200 men they followed absalom so so some will be some of you sisters you look at the outward appearance you understand he because you know he looked like he can lay the pipe down good you dumb as hell because you are like minded you dumb you like you, you are too quick to give credit to a negro. You don't prove because you are what? You are a thirst bucket. You are thirsty. So every negro that pops up, you just want to jump on the brand. You understand? Last. Okay. Now watch this. Now let's move on to the next, the next character. Give me 2 Samuel. Okay. 17 verse 1. Here's another one. 2 Samuel 17 verse 1. This is Ahithophel. Okay. Watch this. Second book of Samuel, chapter 17, verse 1. Read. Moreover, Ahithophel said unto Absalom, Let me now choose out 12,000 men, and I will arise and pursue after David this night. So now Ahithophel is a listen. Let's choose 12,000 men, and we're going to come after, we're going to go after King David. Because the nation, the the, the, the men that followed Absalom, they knew that Absalom wanted to overthrow his father. He wanted to overthrow his father. So Absalom, another trait that Absalom had was what? Covetousness. He worshipped himself. He loved himself. He was obsessed with his self-image, the way he looked. But another characteristic that Absalom had was what? He was covetous. Because he coveted his father's position, but Absalom was the prince. You understand? So if his father is gone, I mean, who's going to take the, 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 the position? He will. But Absalom wasn't satisfied with that. You understand? He was covetous. Read on, verse 2. And I will come upon him while he is weary and weak-handed and will make him afraid. And all the people that are with him shall flee. And I will smite the king only. So because now Ahithophel is giving Absalom counsel of how he's going to how, how they must overthrow his father. You understand? Read. And I will bring back all the people unto thee. The man whom thou seekest is. Second Book of Samuel chapter 17 verse 3. And I will bring back all the people unto thee. The man whom thou seekest is as if all returned. Yes. So all the people shall be in peace. So now he's saying everybody's going to be there. The people that we don't want to be there when we, uh, when we go after King David, they are not going to be there. So everybody's going to be at peace and so forth. Watch this, go ahead. And the saying pleased Absalom well and all the elders of Israel. So you see that thing? So he even had all the men supporting him with his wickedness. Really. Then said Absalom, Call now Hushai the archite also, and let us hear likewise what he said. So now Absalom is saying, okay, I hear your counsel and I'm pleased with it. Let's call Hushai. You understand the archite? So let's hear what he has to say also. Go ahead. Then said Second Book of Samuel, chapter 17, verse 6. And when Hushai was come to Absalom, Absalom spake unto him, saying, Ahithophel had spoken after this manner. Shall we do after his saying? If not, speak thou. So now he's saying, listen, Ahithophel has spoken like unto this manner, like we read in verse 2. So now he says, the counsel that Ahithophel, no, 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 he says, shall we do after his saying? If not, speak thou. He says, if we are not supposed to follow his saying, let us know now. Go ahead. And who shall I say unto Absalom? The counsel that Ahithophel has given is not good at this time. Because Ahithophel was thinking about David's mighty men. He was thinking about that. He said, you want to go against King David? You understand? You want to go against King David and his men? His mighty men? You are not going to win on this. You are not going to be successful. That's what Hushai is telling Absalom regarding Ahithophel's counsel. Now jump down to verse 23. Read. Second Samuel chapter 17, verse 23. 
And when Ahithophel saw that his counsel was not followed, he saddled his ass and arose and got him home to his house, to his city, and put his household in order and hanged himself and Did died. What? And hanged himself. He hanged himself, meaning what? He committed suicide. Go ahead. And died and was buried in the sepulcher of his father. Now, I want you to pause right there. I want you to think about this, right? Think about it. So, Ahithophel, what was his problem? Ahithophel's problem was what? Ahithophel's problem is what? He was a narcissist. He couldn't handle the fact that his poor counsel wasn't followed. You understand? And so because of that, he said, you know what? I'm going to kill myself because of this. Now, let me take it back. Think about it like this. You sisters that... You you looking at the outward appearance of a brother, and let's say you want to prove a brother, right? As you are proving the brother, the brother, because guess what? Beautiful on the outside, but inwardly is a monster. So now you start to pick up things, okay? You will threaten, meaning, you know what? If you don't do what I say, I'm gonna kill myself. Yeah, because that's the spirit that Ahithophel has. Manipulating with death. You understand? Manipulating you with death. He says, if you don't do such and such, I'm going to kill myself. I'm going to harm myself. I'm going to uh, do damage to myself. You understand? So now they are going to control you, manipulate your thought process, because if you do something wrong, they are going to threaten to kill themselves. Now, their death will be associated with you. You see this? So Ahithophel had that spirit. So if you are a simp, you are emotional, effeminate, you are into your feelings, you always feel like you have to have the last word, you have the spirit of Ahithophel. You better fix that. You better fix that thing quickly. And you sisters must be able to recognize that and see it. You must be able to pick that up. Okay, now watch this. Now give me, hmm, let me see if I want to go there. Um, you know what? Hmm. Go back to 2 Timothy because that's where we were. 2 Timothy chapter three, verse two again, read that. Come on. Second book of Timothy, chapter three, verse two. Read. For men shall be lovers of their own selves. Men shall be lovers of their own self. Absalom was one of them. Ahithophel was one of them. Go ahead. Covetous. They are covetous. So Absalom was covetous because he coveted his father's position. So was Ahithophel. Ahithophel was covetous because he loved his position. Go ahead. Boasters. Boasters, Ray. Crowd. Mm. Blasphemous. Come on. Disobedient to parents. Like Absalom was, Ray. Unthankful. Unholy. They don't give a damn about God's laws and they are distasteful and disgraceful. They are ingrates. Ray, verse 3. Come on. Without natural affection. They are without natural affection because they are lovers of their own selves. They have no natural affection. Read. Truth breakers. They don't what? They don't keep agreements. Come on. False accusers. They lie. Read on. Incontinent. Uh -huh. Fierce. Stop right there. Incontinent means lack of self-control. They, they have no discipline. They don't know how to discipline themselves. So it says incontinent, fierce, meaning what? They have a demon on them. They have, they've, got, they've got a monster on them. They look beautiful on the outside, but on the inside, that Negro is a monster. That brother right there, he's got, he's got a violent tendency. He's violent. That's what we're reading here. He says, without natural affection, 
truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent fears. You see that thing right there? That goes back to without natural affection. Okay, come on. Despises of those that are good. Despises of those that keep God's laws. You see that part right there when he says fears? Because that's a violent spirit. Like Absalom here, he says, set the brother's field on fire. He fulfilled also he had a violent spirit. He was willing to kill himself. Now watch this. Give me, give me the book of Proverbs real quick. Give me Proverbs chapter six. Okay, Proverbs six. Yeah, Proverbs 6, verse 12. Read that. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 12. Go ahead. A naughty person, mm. a wicked man, walketh with a fraud mouth. You see that thing right there? Verbally abusive. It says, a naughty person, a wicked man, walketh with a fraud mouth. They don't have a what? They don't have control over the time. Go ahead. He winketh with his eyes. He winketh with his eyes so many what? He's deceitful, he's manipulative. Go ahead. He speaketh with his feet. He's violent. He punch you in the face. Go ahead. He teacheth with his fingers. He teacheth with his fingers, meaning he's violent. This Negro is violent. Go ahead. Frowardness is in his heart. Read. He deviseth mischief continually. He soweth discord. He causes problems in the congregation. So that's what the, that, this scripture right here, it goes into what we read when it says fears, without natural affection, lovers of themselves more than lovers of the most high. They are lovers of themselves, narcissistic behavior, like we read here. You understand? Now watch this. Okay, let's go back. Second Timothy 3. Second Timothy chapter 3. Um, read verse... 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 4. Read that. 2nd book of Timothy chapter 3 verse 4. Come on. Traitors. Mm. Heady. High-minded. Lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. So now it goes back to verse 2 when it says, for men shall be lovers of their own selves. So because they are too in love with themselves, they, what? they love pleasure more than they love the most like God. They love the lusts of the flesh more than the what the spirit of the most high. They don't like that. They hate that. They hate God. They hate his laws too. So he says they are traitors. They cannot be trusted. Heady, high-minded. They think they know too much. You understand? Lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. Go ahead. Verse five. Come on. Having a form of godliness, mm. but, but denying the power thereof. You see that thing? Read. From such, turn away. The Bible is saying, having a form of godliness, meaning they look the part. You understand? They look the part. They look beautiful on the outside like Absalom did. You understand? They put on a good show. They like whited sepulchers like we read in Matthew 23 with the scribes and Pharisees. You understand? It says, having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof. The Lord is saying, from such men, ungodly men, is says, turn away, meaning stay away from that Negro. You understand? But they deny the power thereof because they don't apply what they read. They don't apply whether they listen to classes, whether they study the classes and sit down and read. At the end of the day, they don't apply what is written. They don't apply, but they convince themselves that they do because they are always reading, but they never apply deceiving themselves and you sisters because i keep telling you sisters you sisters you need to study you sisters you need to know the scriptures because if you don't a negro is going to manipulate you you understand yes we're going to be pushing out classes and so forth giving counsels but a negro will corner you and because they know that you don't study they will manipulate scriptures before you know it you will drop your panties i'm telling you straight so you better pay attention. Okay, read that again. Second book of Timothy, chapter three, verse five. Read. Having a form of godliness, 
but denying the power thereof. Come on. From such, turn away. He says, from such men, you must turn away. Next verse. Go ahead. For of this sort are they which creep into houses mm. and lead captive silly women laden with sins. Come on. Led away with diverse lusts. Because as a sister, you've got demons, you don't want to deal with them. You understand? So these type of brothers, they know how to identify a sister that is got what? The sister that got issues. Because in the world, a homemanga knows how to support a sister. They know how to do it. So when we come from the we come from the world, we're coming into this truth to repent to get our minds right. But if a brother does not apply himself, a brother does not examine himself, you don't see counsel, you don't study, doesn't apply. Guess what? That old man that was supposed to be, that's supposed to be put to death on a daily. That old man is feeding that old man. The old man is growing in the truth. You understand? Oxymoron. So now it says, for this sword are they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women because you are a dumb sister, you don't study, laden with sins because you are full of sins, lust, whatever the case may be, led away. They want to lead you away. You are led away with diverse lust. Who's leading you? This wicked Negro who has a form of godliness, but they don't apply the scriptures. You see that thing right there? Next verse. Go ahead, verse 7. The seven, mm. never learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Now, I want to pause right there. Read that verse again. Second book of Timothy, chapter three, verse seven. Read. Ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. He says they are always learning, meaning they are always, quote, unquote, studying. They are, they are not studying, really. Because you study so you can apply. He says they are ever learning, meaning it may speak, it looks like they are studying. But they are never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. That's why it says in verse 5, read verse 5 again, so we understand. Second book of Timothy, chapter 3, verse 5. Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. From such, turn away. He said they have a form of godliness, but they deny the power thereof. What does that mean? Read verse 7 now. Come on, again. Second book of Timothy, chapter 3, verse 7. Mm -hmm. Ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge and of the truth. You see what he's saying? They are always learning, but they don't apply. So what are they called? A professional student. That's what they're called. They're called a professional student. Watch this. Let me get, let me uh, share my screen so you can see. Yes, read that. Proven. Don't get distracted by the cat. Ne? Okay, because there's a cat right there on the right, right there. So read that. Urban Dictionary. Reading from UrbanDictionary.com. Mm -hmm. Professional student. Come on. Person who receives multiple degrees and keeps taking courses instead of holding a profession related to the degrees earned. Mm -hmm can be a compliment or an insult, depending on the speaker. So it is an insult. Because you are all you get are all these degrees, but you don't apply any of them to actually go into a specialization so you can do what? So you can specialize and be in, in, be in a, an actual profession. You understand? A professional career. So you're always studying because you don't want to apply. You understand? So that's what we're reading here. The brothers only study, you understand? But they never apply none of them. They never apply the scriptures to themselves. You understand? So, so now let's go back. Second Timothy 3, verse 7 again. Second book of Timothy, chapter 3, verse 7. Mm -hmm. Ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Go ahead. Now as James and Jambres withstood Moses, mm. so these also resist the truth. Because what this is going back to the wilderness. You understand? He's going back to the wilderness. Korah, Dathan, and Abiram. He's going back to them. It says, so do these also resist the truth because they withstood Moses. They thought they knew better than Moses and Aaron. Go ahead. 
is going to tell you what type of men these are. Ray. Men of corrupt minds. Men of corrupt minds. They are corrupt. These are men of corrupt minds. Give me 1 Timothy 6 verse 4. First book of Timothy chapter 6 verse 4. Why? He is proud. He is knowing what? nothing. He is proud. No, so these nothing. type of men, the most that God says they are proud. You understand? They are proud. Meaning their minds, give me that in Sirach chapter 10. Sirach 10 verse 12. He says, he is proud. Sirach 10 verse 12. Let's understand what this means. Okay. The book of Ecclesiasticus chapter 10 verse 12. Go ahead. The beginning of pride is when one departs from God. Come on. And his heart is turned away from his maker. That's what he's talking about. He says, when you are prideful, you depart, your mind is departed from the Mosa because your mind is no longer governed by God's laws. It's governed by your emotions, your lust. You understand? So go back to 1 Timothy 6, verse 4. 1 book of Timothy, chapter 6, verse 4. Come on. He is proud, knowing mm -hmm. nothing. You know nothing. So when you are proud, you don't know nothing. Go ahead. But doting about questions and strifes of words. Stop right there. It says, but they're going to dote about questions and cause strife of words. So that's why sometimes some brothers will ask questions. And I can see right through your question that you are moving in this spirit right here. And I'll be seeing you and you think I don't see it. I just sit there and say, mm, okay. So I see it when, especially on the on Thursdays, I pick the spirit up. But Negroes don't want to get their minds right. It says he's proud, knowing nothing, but doting about questions and strife of words. Some of you try to be deep. You're moving in this spirit right here. Go ahead. Whereof cometh envy? Come on, what? Whereof cometh envy? Isn't it the same thing that we read in 2 Timothy 3 verse 8? Is as men of corrupt minds reprobate concerning the faith because they withstood Moses. Why, 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 why did they withstood Moses? It was because of envy, because they thought they were on some level. You see that part right there? Envy. That's the spirit you moving. Okay, go ahead. Strive. Strive, because you are full of what the devil is on you. Go ahead. Railings, uh -huh. evil surmisings, evil surmisings. You understand? Ray. Perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds. You see that thing? It says perverse disputing of men of corrupt minds. You are given an answer. You don't take the answer and say, you know what? Let me, let me, let me put, let me marinate my mind on the answer I, I receive. No, no. You want to get more and more, but you don't do nothing with the answers you receive during the Q&As. You don't apply them. So that's the spirit you're moving in. Perverse disputing of men of corrupt minds because you want to make it seem like when you know more. So you ask these follow-up questions, but you don't change your life. You're still that wicked Negro. You see that thing? Keep in. And destitute of the truth. Mm. Supposing that gain is godliness. Because you think that you have all these questions, but they are not profitable to you. So you think that that type of gain, you think that's godliness. No, that's not godliness. That's ungodliness because the Lord says, you are what? You are, you are men of corrupt minds, knowing nothing. You see that thing? That's what he's saying right there. Go ahead. From such, withdraw thyself. You see that thing? From such, withdraw thyself. That's why me, I'll keep you at bay. I'll keep you right there. Why? Because that's what the scripture says to do. It says from such, it says withdraw yourself from such men. Stay away from that Negro. Okay. Now go back to 2 Timothy 3 verse 8 again. 2 book of Timothy chapter 3 verse 8. Go ahead. Now as James and Jambres withstood Moses, so these also resist the truth. Come on. Men of corrupt minds, Reprobate concerning the truth. You see that thing? Men of corrupt minds, meaning the mind is corrupt with sin. Reprobate concerning the faith, meaning what? 
void of judgment concerning the faith of Christ. Go ahead, go ahead, come on. But they shall proceed no further. Stop right there. They shall what? But they shall proceed no further. These are clouds that are without water, trees that bear no fruit. You understand? Plucked up by the root. They are not grounded. Read. For their folly shall be manifest unto all men, mm -hmm. as theirs also was. Meaning, their evil shall be manifest unto all men, as theirs also in the wilderness was, and they were swallowed up by the earth. That's what the Apostle Paul is reminding us of here. You understand? Now, go back. No, 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 no. Give me, I'm going to switch gears now. Watch this. Give me Ezekiel real quick. Ezekiel 16. Okay, Ezekiel 16. Okay, Ezekiel chapter 16 and verse 14. You know, we are equal opportunity, um, you know, teaching. We balance the scale. We deal with the men. We deal with the women. Okay, now read what you got. Ezekiel 16, verse 14. Read that. Come on. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 16, verse 14. Come on. And thy renown went forth among the heathen for thy beauty. Uh -huh. For it was perfect through my comeliness, which I had put unto thee, saith the Lord God. Which I put upon thee, saith the Lord God. So now, he's talking about all Israel, but he's honing in on the women. It says, for it was perfect through my comeliness, which I put upon thee, saith the Lord. So it's talking about the sisters now. Go ahead, verse 15. Come on. Verse 15. Mm -hmm. But thou didst trust in thine own beauty. Stop right there. But you sisters, you've trusted in your own beauty. We're going to deal with that. You trust in your own beauty. Go ahead. But thou didst trust in thine own beauty and praised the harlot because of thy renown. Read. And pourest out thy fornications on everyone that passed by. His mm. it was. His it was. Not the, be the beauty, you understand, is no, it was, it's no longer the beauty of the Mosai. Because it says your fame in verse 14 was renowned among the heathen. And it was perfect through the Mosai God's comeliness. But you sisters decided to trust in your own beauty. And you played the whole because of your fame. And you pour out your fornication on everyone that passed by. It says, his it was. So the harlot that you played, pouring out your fornication on everyone that passed by, it says, his it was. That spirit belongs to who? It belongs to the white man. He's so Edom. You understand? Because that's your God now. Because you trusted in the beauty that he gave you instead of the beauty that God gave you or put upon you. You see that thing right there? But you trust it in your own beauty. I'll give an example. Watch this. Give me the book. Give me the book of Deuteronomy, okay? Chapter 14. Deuteronomy chapter 14 and verse... Deuteronomy chapter 14 and verse 1. Now let's read it. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 14, verse 1. Read. Ye are the children of the Lord your God. Mm. Ye shall not cut yourselves, nor make any boldness between your eyes for the dead. You see what the Lord is saying? He says, ye are the children of the Lord your God. Ye shall not cut yourselves, nor make any boldness between your eyes for the dead. So the part I want to deal with is that part when it says, don't make any boldness between your eyes for the dead. So you are spiritually dead even, because in Egypt we did that. We are in new Egypt now, spiritual Egypt. We're doing the same thing. Our sisters are doing the same thing. They shave off their eyebrows and they draw new ones with pencil. Because you trust in your own beauty. Because the white man has taught you to hate yourself, but to follow after his philosophies and customs and traditions. So I'm just giving an example right there. You understand? So you become this no-brow sister. You don't have no brows. So you have to draw them in pencil. But did you not have brows? No, you have. But you decided to shave them off. You draw new ones with pencil. You understand? Watch this. 
Give me uh, first Peter three. First Peter three verse three. First book of Peter, chapter three, verse three. Whose adorning let it not be that outward adorning of plating the hair mm. and of wearing of gold or of putting on of apparel. You see what the Lord is saying? He says, your adorning must not be that outward adorning of the plating of the hair, of the wearing of gold or putting on of apparel. So the apostle Peter is not saying, you must not do that. No, he's not saying that. He says that must not be your focus because now the sisters, their focus now is how they look on the outside. Vain glory. You understand? Get that in Proverbs 31. Because they forget the worry. Your beauty is going to fade over time. You understand? All that is going to be left is what? The wisdom that you have now. Watch this. Proverbs 31, verse 30. Proverbs chapter 31, verse 30. Go ahead. Favor is deceitful, and beauty mm. is vain. And beauty is what? And beauty is vain. You see that thing? The Lord is telling you, he says, beauty is vain. So if you just focus on the outward appearance, you understand? The Lord says, beauty is vain. You are trusting upon vain things. Go ahead. But a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. But a woman that fears the Lord, she's going to be praised because what? That wisdom will endure forever. That's why today we can read about Judith. They are no longer here. You can read about uh, Miriam. You can read about when our former mother Miriam got her mind, right? You can read about Shifra, Pua, Esther. You understand? Our foremother Susanna, our foremother Sarah, so on and so forth. You understand? Beauty is vain because over time, gravity takes over. You, you start to what? You start to, your skin start to change. The way you look start to change. But he says, but a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. Understand that thing. Beauty, that wisdom is going to make your face to shine. You see that thing? Now, go back to First Peter 3, verse 3. Come on. First book of Peter, chapter 3, verse 3. Read. Who's adorning let it not be that outward adorning of plating the hair and of wearing of gold or of putting on of apparel. You see that thing? Meaning what? Don't, you, you, don't, have, don't, don't have a vain spirit. Meaning what? You are shallow. All you care about is how you look on the outside. And you see our sisters today, even in the truth, sisters, they wear long, beautiful dresses. They, they put on head wraps and so forth. They put jewels on their foreheads and so forth. But inwardly, you are full of unholy demons. You understand? You, spiritually, you are a monster. Nobody can stand you. Your personality is, is whack. You understand? It's like, it's like you need drugs or something. You're, there's just something wrong with your personality. You are, you're crooked. You understand? Why? Because your focus is wrong. Your priorities is wrong. You're not putting your focus on the right things. You see that thing? Okay, watch this. Give me First Timothy 2 verse 9. Because the apostle Paul said the same thing that the apostle Peter is teaching us here. First Timothy 2 verse 9. Watch this. First book of Timothy chapter 2 verse 9. Go ahead. In like manner also, that women adorn themselves in modest apparel. Read. With shamefacedness. And sobriety, mm -hmm. not with florid hair or gold or pearls or costly array. Meaning, those things must not be what must not be what defines you. That's what the Lord is saying. Because sisters, they spend ninety nine point nine percent of the time focusing on what they see on the mirror, wanting to make themselves look good in or on the outside. But inwardly, she's a spiritual demon. She's a monster. You understand? She's a vampire. She'll suck the life out of you, okay? She's a spiritual vampire on the inside. You understand? But read on, verse 10. This is, what, this is what's gonna beautify you over and above what you're looking on the outside. This is how you must be on the inside. Go ahead. This is what's gonna beautify you 
what this one was going to beautify what looks what's what we see on the outside read verse 10 but which becometh woman professing godliness with good works you see what god is saying he says but you must profess godliness with good works this is what's going to beautify you go ahead let the woman learn in silence with all subjection that's what's going to beautify you because when do we listen to women brothers when they are silent that's when we listen the only time when we listen to the sisters is when they are silent you understand go ahead read again verse 11 first book of timothy chapter 2 verse 11 go ahead let the woman learn in silence with all subjection with all subjection meaning with all submission you must learn in silence with all submission. That's what that's that's a beautiful thing right there. That's a beautiful thing. Get that in Sarah 26. Sarah chapter 26 and verse 14. Watch this. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 26, verse 14. Go ahead. A silent and loving woman is a gift mm. of the Lord. That's beautiful right there. Go ahead. And there is nothing so much worth as a mind well instructed. You see what the Bible is saying? A silent and loving woman is a gift. So a loud mouth and hateful woman, the one that is like a spiritual vampire, God says that's a gift of Satan right there. That is a gift of the devil. Is that there's no, there's no, is that there is nothing so much worth as a mind that is well instructed. Go ahead. Read on. A shamefaced and faithful woman is a double grace. Mm. And her continent mind cannot be valued. Meaning what? A continent mind, meaning what? A disciplined mind cannot be valued. You cannot, you can put a, you cannot put a prize on a sister like that. Get Sarah 36 verse 22. Watch this. of Ecclesiastes chapter 36 verse 22. Go ahead. The beauty of a woman cheereth the countenance mm. and a man loveth nothing better. You see, that's true right there. A woman is a trophy. Let me say that again in case I started. Now, I, didn't, I know what I'm saying. I'm not confused about what I'm saying. A woman is a trophy. Read again, verse 22. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 36 verse 22. Go ahead. The beauty of a woman cheereth the countenance, mm. and, and a man loveth nothing better. You see that? Men love that. Men love women. It says what? Men love beautiful women. It's not a mystery. No, it's written right there in the scriptures. It says the beauty of a woman, it cheereth the countenance of a man. It cheers a man's face. You understand? It says, and a man loveth nothing better. Now, you might be thinking, yeah, I need to puff myself. I need to look bad. I need to look good. No, no, there's nothing wrong with that. As long as you're not a spiritual vampire on the inside, we're good with that. Watch the next verse, though. Go ahead. If there be kindness. If, 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 if there be kindness. So what's going to support verse 22 is verse 23. If there is kindness, go ahead. Meekness. Meekness, that's submission. Go ahead. And comfort. And comfort. Meaning what? We're gonna you it, you're gonna comfort your Lord. You're gonna comfort that man. You understand? Your 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 Lord can be going through things, but he knows that you know when I get home, he, he, that my home is like a little heaven. It's like the there's like a glimpse of the kingdom of heaven on earth. Because why? When I get home, my rib is making sure that everything is all good. When I arrive, I don't be asked about nothing. I just get I just get sent to uh, to take a bath. Everything is ready up in there. It smells good. Music is playing. Everything. Mm, let me stop right there. Let me let me shut up. Okay. Verse twenty three. <laughs> Verse twenty three again. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter thirty six. Verse twenty three. Go ahead. If there be kindness, meekness, and comfort mm. in the tongue. And 
and comfort in her tongue. Meaning when she, she opens her mouth with wisdom. Yes, my Lord. Mm. Yeah, that sounds good, right? She's not saying yes, my Lord, or that black nigga right there in the background. She's not saying that. Go ahead. Then is not her husband like other men. Then is not like the husband, husband like other men. This man is going to have what? He's going to have a long life on this earth with a woman like this. This is this right here. That's the gift of the Lord right there. That's not a gift of Satan. Okay, now watch this. Give me the book of 2 Kings chapter. Now I'm going to give you an example. You know, because we, we're dealing with sisters that are focusing too much on their outward appearance because that's the spirit that our sisters are moving in these, in these last days. They are not focusing on the spiritual things so much but they are focusing more on the outward things, how they look on the outside. But inwardly, she's a spiritual vampire. She will, she will drink your blood. She'll suck the life out of you like a tick. Okay, now watch this. Give me the book of 2 Kings 9, verse 30. You know, like I cannot deal with this without touching on this demon right here. Second book of Kings. I have to touch on this demon. Read what you got. Come on. Second book of Kings, chapter 9, verse 30. Go ahead. And when Jehu was come to Jezreel, mm -hmm. Jezebel heard of it. What? Jezebel heard of it. Jezebel. Jezebel heard of it. Go ahead. So the subject matters about Jezebel, that crazy demon. So because Jezebel was not, uh, she wasn't bad looking. Jezebel was a beautiful woman. Understand that. Jezebel was not an ugly looking woman. She wasn't a ragamuffin. You understand? Okay, come on. And she painted her face. She did what? And she painted her face. She put on makeup. So Jezebel was into her looks. You understand? Go ahead. And tied her head mm. and looked out at the window. Because Jehu was coming to put Jezebel to death. But the point is this. Jezebel painted her face and she it says what? She tired her head. Meaning what? Her head was like a tire. She had a head wrap on. She painted her face. She put gold, whatever, ornaments and all that, earrings, nose, jewels and whatnot. She decked herself. She was bare to the bone. But Jezebel was a demon. Jezebel was a spiritual vampire. So such as some of our sisters, you understand, spiritual vampires, they'll suck the life out of you. So you, you brothers, you have to look at that because sisters, they can pretend for law. They can keep the demon inside for six months, for a year. And you think, you know, I really got a good woman right here. 12 months later, the demon jumps out. Full-blown demon. Because she's been hiding it for a while. Me, me, I'll provoke the demon to come out. I want to see what spirit I'm dealing with. You understand? So that's what we're reading here. Watch this. Give me Genesis 30 verse 1. This is our foremother, Rachel. Rachel was beautiful. When you read the scriptures, she was beautiful. She was a beautiful sister. You understand? Our foremother. She was a beautiful, she was, she was a beautiful foremother. Watch this. Genesis chapter 30. Okay. Verse 1. You know what? Read Genesis 29. Read Genesis chapter 29, verse 17. Start of verse 16. We're going to read 16 and 17. Watch this. Genesis chapter 29, verse 17. Verse 16. And Laban had two daughters. The name of the elder was Leah, and the name mm. of the younger was Rachel. So Rachel was the younger one. Go ahead. Leah was tender-eyed, mm. but Rachel was beautiful and well-favored. So you see that? It says Leah was tender-eyed, meaning she has squinty eyes, but Rachel was beautiful and well-favored. So Rachel was beautiful. Now let's go to the next chapter, the first verse. Go ahead. The book of Genesis, chapter 30, verse 1. Go ahead. And, well, and when Rachel saw that she, was, that she bare Jacob no children, Rachel envied her sister and said unto Jacob, give me children or else I die. You see that thing? An ultimatum. Manipulation. 
What spirit is this? That's, this is the spirit of Ahithophel. This spirit right here is the spirit of Ahithophel. You understand? So Ahithophel was a woman. He was a man, but he was a simp. So this spirit, that's the spirit right there. It says, give me children or else I die. I'm going to kill myself. That's the spirit of Ahithophel. Some sisters, because they are spiritual vampires, she's a monster. She will manipulate you with death. I'm going to hurt myself. I'm going to kill myself. She's always threatening you with death. Stay away from that wicked demon right there. Stay away from them. They manipulate you with tears. You know, sisters, be, they like to do that. Tears. You understand? So that's manipulate. That's the manipulation game. That's what we read here. That right there, that's the spiritual vampire sitting right there, sitting deep down. You understand? That's a monster. Unless the sisters get their mind right, their, their minds right, and repent, and let go of that old woman, guess what? That demon will sit right in there, and you, because you are a homemonger, you are horny, you are a thirst bucket yourself, you go after the sister because you're horny. No, uh, I'm going to talk to leadership. I like that sister right there. That sister right there? Yes, I like that sister right there. No, that sister's not ready. No, but I like it. So you go up against the commands of the leader of leadership. Guess what? You discover the demon 12 months later. Guess what? Now you're really in trouble. You, you understand? You are in some serious trouble right there. Watch this. Give me the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 7, verse 26. You see, sisters, they know how to hide their demons. They can pretend for a while. You understand? But the black man, watch this. I'm going to prove what I'm saying. Give me 2 Samuel 13, verse 15. You know, that's my favorite verse right there. Read what you got. 2 Samuel 13, verse 15. I'm going to show you how quickly the black man's character comes out after this. After this happens, his character will pop right out. Watch this. 2 Samuel 13, verse 15. Let's Second book of Samuel, chapter 13, verse 15. Go ahead. Then Amnon hated her exceedingly, so that the hatred wherewith he hated her was greater than the love wherewith he had loved her. Read. Really? And Amnon said unto her, Arise, be gone. This is after he slept with his sister. So he sleeps with this woman. He sleeps with this woman. He has sex with it. After he's got his rocks off, now he's saying, listen, now he hates the sister. Yeah, you know, he's not that. She's not, she's not my type. She's not this. I'm not ready for marriage. I'm not ready for anything serious. Me, I'm just passing through. So on and so forth. You see that? It says, so that the hatred wherewith he hated it was greater than the love wherewith he had loved it. And I'm not said unto her, arise and be gone. Now read verse 18. Watch this. Second, second book of Samuel, chapter 13, verse 18. Mm -hmm. And she had a garment of diverse colors upon her. Read. And with such robes were the king's daughters that were virgins apparel. Read. Then his servant brought her out and bolted the door after her. You see what you see what Amnon did? After he sex the sister, he says, get the hell out and close the door behind him. So right then and there, the Negroes, the Negro, he, the, 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 the management office is now is no longer they fire the receptionist. Now you see the real person. You see how what the company is really like. You understand? That's what you're gonna find out. But with the sister, she can present the management office. The receptionist for 12 months or more. But brothers, as soon as you get your rocks off, your personality comes out. Because this whole time you were working in a vein show, trying to look like you have everything together. And then after you, you, you get your rocks off, then the true Negro pops right out. Then you understand, but sisters will hold it in for a while. That's how Jezebel moves. Because she's a spiritual vampire. She's a monster. You understand? So she's going to what? She's going to hold it in. Now, give me um, Ecclesiastes chapter 7, 
verse 26. Okay, sisters that only does they only just care about the outward appearance. This is what the Lord said about this thing. Okay, you men, you, you, you need to pay attention here. Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 26. Read that. Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 26. Go ahead. And I find more bitter than death the woman mm. whose heart is snares and nets. Whose and mind. her hands as bad. So, so it says whose heart, meaning her mind is a snare. Her mind is a net. And her hands as bent. Meaning what? She is going to lock you up in her web. A web of deceit and wickedness. And what is the main driver that she's using to control you? The coochie. Because she knows that you are whipped by that puss that, mm, excuse my French, you are whipped, <laughs> Ooh, you are whipped by the coochie, the box, let me use that word, you are whipped by the box, you understand? Guess what happens to you? It says, her heart is snares and nets, and her hands as bands. Go ahead, who saw what? Whose heart Come is on. snares and nets? Read. And her hands as bands. Come on. Whoso pleaseth God shall escape from her. Come on. But the sinner shall be taken by her. You see what the Bible is saying? But the sinner is as whoso pleaseth God shall escape from her. If you want to please the Lord, you better escape from that type of woman. Because she what? She's good at manipulating men. She'll manipulate you with tears, with lies. You understand? Playing the victim. They will manipulate you. So the Lord is saying, if you want to please the Lord, you better run away from that sister if she don't repent. Stay away from that demon. Because she looks beautiful on the outside, but inwardly, she's a what? She's like a cop. You understand? The graveyard. So it says, but the sinner shall be taken by her. The simp will be taken by this woman. The simp will be taken by this woman. You understand? Now give me Sarah 25 verse 16. You know, start, start of verse 13. Sarah 25 verse 13. The simp will be taken by this woman right here. You know what? Keep reading. Keep reading. Sarah Ecclesiastes 7 26. Read verse 27 now. Verse 27. Come on. Behold, this have I found, said the preacher, counting one by one to find out the account. Meaning to find out the number. He says he was counting one by one to count, to find out the number. Go ahead. Which yet my soul seeketh, but I find not. He says, but I didn't find. Read. One man among a thousand have I found. He says, the one man, the one man is talking about himself. He says, one man among a thousand have I found. The one man is talking about himself. Read. But a woman among all those have I not found. But a woman is talking about the thousand now. But he says, among these thousand women, I have not found a virtuous woman. He says, even with the thousand women that he was sleeping with, he says, all of them, they were dumb as hell. They were dumb. You understand? Watch this. Give me First Kings 12. First Kings chapter 12. Let me prove what I'm saying. First Kings chapter 12 and verse, verse 3. First, first book of Kings chapter 12, verse 3. Read. That they sent and called it. No, no, no. No, I'm sorry. Chapter 11, verse 3. First Kings 11, verse 3. First book of Kings chapter 11, verse 3. Go ahead. And he had 700 wives princesses and 300 concubines and his wives turned away his heart you see what he's saying is that solomon had 700 wives princesses and 300 concubines so he had a thousand women he says out of all these thousand women he says i have not found a virtuous woman that's why proverbs 31 is written you understand? Because his mother now is teaching him 
how to find a virtuous woman, how to identify a virtuous woman. Because King Solomon, to when he was, when you, you understand? When he, when he, when he was, uh, when he went into folly and madness, there was a lot of evil things that he did. And he had the poor example, you understand? In his life also, because um, remember, King David slept with Uriah, Uriah's wife. That was a poor example that he set for King Solomon. You, you see that thing? Yeah, but King David, all praises, he repented because the Lord loved King David. Don't get it. Don't misunderstand what I'm saying. But what I'm trying to show you is that that was that example, that that's one of the examples that he had. You understand? So now he didn't know how to identify a virtuous woman. He didn't know how to do that. That's why his mother had to teach him how to find one because Bathsheba got her mind right. That's why she was able to teach King Solomon, his son, about what type of, what a, what a virtuous woman looks like. Okay, get that in um, Proverbs 31. Because this is Bathsheba speaking. Bathsheba was able to get a mind right. You understand? Proverbs 31 verse 1. Read them. The book of Proverbs chapter 31 verse 1. Read. The words of King Lemuel. The prophecy that his mother taught him. The prophecy that his mother Bathsheba taught him. Lemuel is another is, is another name for King Solomon. Go ahead. Verse 2. What, my son? And what, the son of my womb? And what, the son of my vows? Read. Give not thy strength unto woman, nor thy ways to that which destroyeth kings. You see what he's saying? Don't give your strength unto a woman. Know your ways to that which destroyeth kings. Meaning what? Don't give your soul unto a woman. Don't do that, the Lord is saying. Because she's going to destroy you. She's going to destroy your good name. That's what the Lord is saying right there. I mean, that's what the Lord is saying, obviously. But this is the mother of King Solomon teaching him how to, he's teaching him about women. That women, that non virtuous women, women that are spiritually vampires, they are going to destroy you. That's what she's teaching him about women. You understand? That's some heavy stuff right there. Watch this. That's a, I'm going to deal with that next time, Lord's way. Now watch this. Give me Sarah 25, verse 13. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 25, verse 13. Hold on. You know what? Wait. You see, you see, now, you sisters, you need to think about this. You see when it says, um, you know what, get, get, get Serac. Get Serac 26. You understand? Serac 26. Serac chapter 26 and verse... Hold on. Before we go to Serac, Get Proverbs 31, verse 10. The book of Proverbs, chapter 31, verse 10. Mm -hmm. Who can find a virtuous woman? Wait. For her price is far above rubies. Now, I want you to stop right there. He says, who can find a, a virtuous woman? So a virtuous woman must be found. That means you must search for this type of woman. This type of woman is not going to fall on your lap. That's what the Lord is saying. A virtuous woman, he says, who can find a virtuous woman? Because King Solomon, with all the thousand women that he dealt with, he didn't find not a one among a thousand. He said, one among a thousand, he says, among these women, I have not found a virtuous woman among these thousand women that I was dealing with. So because a virtuous woman is hard to find. A virtuous woman is not easy to get. A virtuous woman is not going to fall on the, from the sky. Get Proverbs 18, verse 22. Watch this. The book of Proverbs, chapter 18, verse 22. Right. Whoso findeth a wife, findeth a good thing. Mm -hmm. And obtaineth favor of the Lord. 
So what is the Lord teaching us? The Lord is teaching us that, listen, whoso findeth a wife, findeth a good thing. Because a good wife, she has, you must search for this type of woman. She's not going to fall on your lap. You must search for her. It says you're going to obtain favor of the Lord. Because if you have, that means there are certain things you must do in order for you to prepare your mind to receive this type of woman. You must fast open. You must pray. You must apply the scriptures. Pray to the Most High. Yeah, consistently pray to the Lord to find this type of woman because this type of woman right here, she's not going to fall on your lap. And you sisters must read this and you may say, you know what? I want to pattern myself after what, what we're reading in Proverbs 31 verse 10. That virtuous woman who, who have, whose her prize is, as, is far above rubies. Meaning this type of woman is hard to find. She's priceless. You understand? That's what the Lord is saying right there. Okay, watch this. Give me Sirach 7 verse 19. Because what we read in Proverbs 31 verse 10, you understand precept with, with Proverbs 18, 22, but it also goes with this right here. Sirach 7 verse 19. Because it says, who can find a virtuous woman for her price is far above rubies. Read that. Proverbs. I mean, Sirach 7 verse 19. Come on. Of Ecclesiasticus chapter 7, verse 19. Go ahead. For call not a wise and good woman, for her grace is above gold. You see that? He says, don't let go of a wise and good woman. He says, because her grace is above gold. Her price is far above rubies. She's priceless. Why? She's submissive. You understand? She's silent. She reverences her husband. She's respectable. You understand? She supports her love 100%. That type of woman right there, and she knows how to deal with the house. You understand? She understands hygiene. She understands order in the house. I must make sure she's got skills. That type of sister, listen, that type of sister is not going to fall on, she's not going to fall on your lap. Understand that, brothers. And you sisters, you are not going to magically become that woman. You must be taught how to become that virtuous woman. You must be groomed into becoming that virtuous woman. You understand? And in order for you, if you want to get rid of that spiritual demon, that spiritual vampire, you understand? That monster that you are spiritually, guess what? You must be willing to receive the teachings and the groomings of how to become a virtuous and loving wife. You must be able to follow those instructions. You understand? Guide the house. Take care of yourself. Study. Apply the scriptures. Follow counsel. Get skills. So on and so forth. Those things. Yeah, those things. Is that Those are the characteristics of a virtuous woman. You understand? Okay. Now watch this. Now give me Sirach. Okay, give me Sirach uh, chapter 25 now. Verse 13. Let's read that. Of Ecclesiasticus chapter 25, verse 13. Because if you, you know what, give me Sarah 25, verse 21, then we're going to jump back up. I'm going to show you a lot of the time, sisters, they present the outward appearance and everything is just fake, 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 fake. But they hide behind the long dresses and the borrowed blue, the fringes, the beautiful head wraps, and so forth. But because when I, this is what you were looking at, you were, you were chasing. You were chasing after that woman. You were looking for this. Read that. Sarah 25, 21. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 25, verse 21. Read. Stumble not at the beauty of a woman and mm. desire her not for pleasure. You see what the Bible is saying? It says, don't, don't fall for the beauty of a woman. Because we read in Proverbs 31, verse 30, it says, beauty is vain. So if you fall for the beauty of a woman, you are simple-minded. You see the big booty, the curves, the pretty face. You see that thing? The big chest. That's all you care about. The Lord says, you desiring that woman for pleasure. Guess what? That's not the woman for you. That, that's not the woman for you. That's not the woman you should marry or should even attempt to talk to the sister because she's not marriage material. You understand? She's not fit. She does not fit to be a wife yet. She must what? She must repent and be taught how to become one. 
That's what the Lord is teaching us right there. Now jump up to verse 13. Come on. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 25, you know verse 13. Hold on. Before we get there, you see that part right there says, stumble not at the beauty of a woman and desire her not for pleasure? Get Sirach 9. Because in Sirach, it goes into that. Get that in Sirach 9, verse 8. Because a lot of the times is that, hmm, you know what? Jump up to verse 5. We're going to read verse 5. Then we're going to jump to verse 8. Read that. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 9, verse 5. Mm -hmm. Gaze not on a maid that thou mm. fall not by those things that are, pre that are precious in her. You see that thing? You gaze, meaning you stay, you lust. You lust on a young woman, on a sister. And then you end up falling for those things that are precious in her. The curves, the big booty, the, the big chest, the pretty face. You understand? The, you know, she's got beautiful head wraps, the earrings, the nose, the nose jewels, all of that. You mesmerize by all their outward appearance. Appearance, you understand? So you just fall for the outward appearance. Now read verse 8. Watch this. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 9, verse 8. Go ahead. Turn away then I from a beautiful woman. Mm. And look not upon another and another's beauty. Read. For many have been deceived by the beauty of a woman. Come on. For herewith love is kindled as a fire. You see what the Bible is saying? It says, turn away your eye from a beautiful woman. Meaning, give me that in Job 31 verse 1. Turn away your eye from a beautiful woman. Remember, it says, gaze not on a maid because you're going to fall by those things that are precious in her. You understand? So don't gaze. Don't lust. Because you want to, because if you do that, you will fall. You will fall for the, for, you will fall because of a beauty, not because of a substance. Okay? Because you don't prove. Or if you do prove, you don't, you take, you, you are, you are Spirit Gonzalez, you peck men, you peck men. Proverbs, I mean, Job 31 verse 1. Job chapter 31 verse 1. Go ahead. I made a covenant with mine eyes. Mm -hmm. Why then should I think upon a maid? Why then should you think upon a young woman? He says, I made a covenant with mine eyes. You must make a covenant with your eyes. Don't go after the lust of your eyes or the lust of your flesh. That's what the Lord is saying right there. So go back to Sirach 9. Sirach 9 verse 8 again. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 9, verse 8. Read. Turn away then I from a beautiful woman and look not upon another's beauty. Mm. For many have been deceived by the beauty of a woman. Read. For herewith love is kindled as a fire. You see what the Bible is saying? It says, for many have been deceived by the beauty of a woman. Because beauty is vain. There's a lot of fake things that don't even belong to her that she's put on. Those things don't even belong to her or don't belong on her body. But she puts those things upon her. But she's not like that 24 hours, 365 days a year. She's not like that throughout the year. But you just like the, the receptionist. You like the front. You're only interested in the front page. You understand? You're only interested in that. And sisters, now that's that. You see, right there, that's their forte. To deck themselves out, sisters know how to do that thing. They can deceive you just by decking themselves out. The only way to impress me, I want, yes, we can prove and all that. I want to come to your house. I want to see the kitchen, how it looks. I want you to cook. I want to see how you are in the cook in the kitchen. Can you throw down in the kitchen? If you cannot, we... Listen, we have problems. You understand? Your house is not clean. You've got bad breath. Mm -mm, no, sister. We, you're not, I'm not your type. You understand? I'm not your type. Mm -mm. Why? Because that means you don't take care of yourself. You don't make an effort to take care of yourself or to take care of your household. That means when we get married, the house is going to be in a mess. There's going to be cockroaches everywhere because the sink will always have dishes in it. You see that? So you have to think, you brothers, sisters know how to deck themselves out. They know how to present the front office. You fall for that, you gone. Okay? Read on. Verse 9. Go ahead. You know what? 
Give me Proverbs 6. Proverbs 6, 24. I want that thing. Proverbs chapter 6 and verse 24. The book of Proverbs chapter 6, verse 24. Go ahead. To keep thee from the evil woman, mm. from the flattery of the tongue of a strange woman, because this type of woman, she knows how to she knows how to work you out. She knows how to flatter you, how to make you feel like you're the best thing that has ever happened since sliced bread. You understand? Roasted chicken. She she'll tell you all those things. Okay, go ahead. Last not after her beauty in thine heart, in thine heart. Really? Neither let her take thee with her eyelids. You see what the Bible is saying? It says, don't last after her beauty in your mind. Neither let her take thee with her eyelids, because the sisters they've got wanton eyes. They be looking at you from the from your feet top down. You understand? Up down, down up. They be eyeballing you from top down. You understand? Eating you with their eyes. Yeah, they be doing that, and you feel like mm, I must be special. No, they are waking you. They are ready to body bag you. Okay, go ahead. For by means of a horish woman, a man is brought to a piece of bread. Mm. And the adulteress will hunt for the precious life. That's what she cares about. You see, on the head, that's her focus. Their focus is only there. That's what it says. It says, and the adulteress will hunt for the precious life. That's what she's hunting for. When the precious life ends, she ends also. She disappears. But she got you by how she looks on the outside. But she inwardly, she's a spiritual vampire. She'll suck the life out of you. You'll what? You'll what? By means of a horish woman, a man is brought to a piece of bread. You'll end up being a crab. That's what the Lord is saying right there. Now give me Sarah 25 verse 13. Ecclesiasticus 25 verse 13. Read that. The book of Ecclesiasticus chapter 25 verse 13. Read. Give me any plague, but the plague of the heart, mm -hmm. and any wickedness, but the wickedness of a woman. So you see, the Lord is saying, He knows what He's saying. He says, "Give me any plague, but the plague of the heart." Don't mean, don't give him the plague of the mind. Don't plague my mind. He says, "Any, give me any wickedness, but don't give me the wickedness of a woman." You see what the Bible is saying right there? Now that's heavy right there. Now read verse. Read verse 16. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 25, verse 16. Well, I had rather dwell with a lion and a dragon than mm. to keep house with a wicked woman. Because this woman, she's a spiritual vampire. She's a monster. She looks beautiful on the outside, but inwardly, she's a what? She is a vampire. She, her job is she's going to suck the life out of you. You understand? But because when you only focus on the outside, you overlook all the red flags. And the sister can tell if you're only focusing on the outside. You see, sister don't like it when you tell them about themselves. Because now it's like, hey, this guy is exposing me. Most. Yeah? He's, just, he's just putting all my cards on the table exposing my, my, my behind. Yes, we have to bring those things out. Why? Because repentance is open unto us. So we get our minds right. So become new women. So you become that new woman that the Lord is looking for. You understand? Read on. So now you think about it. You, you picture a lion, picture a dragon. He says, I would rather dwell with these two animals than to keep house with a wicked woman. Go ahead. Verse 17. The wickedness of a woman changeth her face, mm. darkeneth her countenance like sackcloth. He says the wickedness of a woman it is going to change your face. Meaning what? Yes, if your spirit, if you are, if you are, if you, if you are a spiritual vampire as a sister, your face is going to change. He says the wickedness of a woman changeth her face. The demon is what the people are going to see when they see you. Ah, that sister has got a mean spirit. 
That sister's got a demon. I can't, even in the world, they're like, I can't, I, I can't put my finger on it, but there's something wrong with that sister. Something wrong with that woman right there. I don't know, I can't put my finger on it. Something is not right. Yeah, because that, you are a spiritual vampire. The brother spirit is not, it, it, they are not connecting. Why? Because that's the spiritual vampire right there. You understand? That's what the Lord is saying. Your countenance is going to change. Your countenance is not going to shine because you have wisdom. Your countenance is going to change because you have an unholy demon that you are feeding. Read. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 25, verse 18. Read. A husband shall sit among his neighbors, and when he heareth it, shall sigh bitterly. You see what the Bible is saying? It says her husband. Now this woman, she gets married because now, guess who married this woman? A simp. Because only a simp will marry this type of sister. Her husband shall sit among his neighbors. And when he heareth it, meaning when your name comes up, he's going to sigh bitterly. You understand? Because you are worse than a lion and a dragon. That's what the Lord is saying right there. So this man's life is going to be what? You're going to keep, you're going to shorten the lifespan of this man. You are not going to double this lifespan. You're going to shorten it. You'll cut it in half. Why? Because you're stressing him out because you are worse than a dragon. Okay, go ahead. All wickedness is but little to the wickedness of a woman. Mm. Let the portion of a sinner fall upon her. But the sinner shall be taken by him. That's what we read in Sirach 7.26. It says, whoso pleaseth God shall escape from this woman. But the sinner will be taken by her. It also says, let the portion of a sinner fall upon her. That's going to be your portion. That wicked woman right there will be your portion because you wicked as hell. You did not want to please the Lord by departing from this woman to escape. You don't want to escape. So now she's trapped you. And she's trapped with the number one thing that she knows how to trap a man. Beauty and what's between her legs. That's it. You understand? Now watch this. Now, jump down to verse 24. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 25, verse 24. You know what? Read verse 23 and 24 together. Go ahead. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 25, verse 23. Read. A wicked woman abateth the courage, mm. maketh an heavy countenance and a wounded heart. You see what the Bible is saying? It says, a wicked woman will take away a man's courage. A man's courage to be what? To be the head of the house. A man's courage to be a leader of the house. A man's courage to be a father. You understand? To lead his nation. You understand? To be a husband. To be a lord over you. You, the, this wicked, this wicked woman, she's counter revolutionary. This right here, she's a counter revolutionary woman. She's anti, she's anti revolutionary. This type of woman is as naked, is an, an heavy countenance and a wounded heart. She's gonna what? She will destroy you mentally and spiritually because she wants you to stoop to her level. And because you are a sim, you're not gonna flee from, you're not gonna escape from this type of woman. That's what the Lord is saying right there. Okay, go ahead. A woman that will not what? A woman that will not comfort her husband in distress, maketh weak hands and feeble knees. You see that? A woman that will not comfort her husband. The reason why it's written like this is because some sisters, guess what? When things go tough for the, for the, for the man, instead of encouraging this man, Instead of cheering for this man to continue to push to change the situation, you know what she does? She used that as an opportunity to kick the dog when he's down, to kick that man now, now that he's down. Now it's her opportunity to do what? To insult that man, to belittle that man, to mistreat that man, to act like a demon because whenever the man says the order in the house, she don't like that. So when the opportunity comes, when the child comes into the house, the brother is hit with a trial, a tribulation and so forth. Instead of comforting her, she becomes a what? She becomes a burden. She makes the situation worse. That right there, that's a spiritual vampire. Okay, read. It says she what? It says make it what? In this A woman 
that will not comfort her husband in distress, maketh weak hands and feeble knees. Maketh weak hands and feeble knees. Go ahead. Of the woman came the beginning of sin. Mm. And through her, we all die. That's why this, this says there's no wickedness more than the wickedness of a woman. Because the reason why the people die today, the reason why we, yeah, we are not immortal, the reason why we are not ruling is mainly because of the woman. That's why. It's because of the woman. That's why we don't follow no woman. We follow no women in this camp. Why? Because the most high God will do away with us. We must follow our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And the black woman must follow. Spiritual vampires, they are going to twitch. They are going to watch the iRobot movie of Will Smith. Another simp. Watch this. Give me First Esdras 4.26. First Esdras chapter 4, verse 26. First book of Esdras, chapter 4, verse 26. Go ahead. Yea, many they be that have run out of their wits for women mm. and become servants for their sakes. This is simple activity, okay? They become servants for their sakes. Read. Many also have perished, have erred, and have sinned for women. You see, it says many have died. They have erred concerning the faith and sinned for women. Because why? Because of the beauty, the coochie. You understand? Because she's crazy. And because she's crazy. Because some brothers, they love women that are full of drama. He says, no, she's feisty. No, she's, you know, she's, you know, she's not boring. She, no, no, that's a demon. She's crazy. That's not sexy. You understand? That's not sexy. Ray. And now, do you not believe me? Is not the king great in his power? Do not all the regions fear to touch him? Wait. Yet did I see him and Apami, the king's concubine, the daughter of the admirable Bartakas, sitting at the right hand of the king. So now you see Apami, the king's concubine, sitting at the king's right hand. Watch this. And taking the crown from the king's head. You see what she did? It. She took the crown from the king's head. What type of disrespect is that? Because, guess what? Because of the outward appearance, he fell for the outward appearance, but he did not consider that this woman is a demon. You understand? She's a monster. She's a spiritual vampire. She took the crown from the king's head. Go ahead. And setting it upon her own head. You see that? Also Hold on, wait. And setting it upon her own head. So what does this mean? Meaning what? Listen, I'm the king. I'm the one that's ruling right here. Yes, you are in the you. You the king, they call you the king, but I'm the one that's running the show. That's what she's really saying right there. By that act. She took the crown from the king's head and put it upon, excuse me, upon her own head. I run this beer. That's what she's saying. I run this thing. You understand? Isn't that what the sisters are saying? All these women strippers that are called themselves rappers now. You understand? Read on. She also struck the king with her left hand. Some of you, you, you think, no, no, no. You know, she's spiced. You know, she, I like a little drama. I like a little violence. He be smacking you upside the head or chest bump, chest bumping you, punching you in the mouth, clapping you. You think that's sex? Only a simple thing like that. But you see what the, this woman did to the king? Slap the king across the face. The king didn't see nothing wrong with it because he had fallen for this woman. This, Je this demon Jezebel. You understand? He did not see nothing wrong with that thing. Because she had full control of him. 100% full control. Yes, you understand? So this right here, what we're reading, these are beautiful monsters, both men and women. You understand? And that's what's going on this day. Sisters come in, brothers come in.
They don't want to change their ways, but the outward appearance, the brother's got a nice beard. The brother's putting nice fringes on. He combs his hair. He's all, you understand? He's, 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 he's oiled his he's, he's dreadlocks. You understand? All of that. But guess what? Monsters, spiritual vampires on the inside. You understand? Their hair is nice and combed and all that, put glycerin on it and so forth. But he's a monster. You just need to activate the right conditions for that demon to jump out. The sister's the same way. You understand? Decked out all decked out, but she's a spiritual vampire. She'll suck the life out of you. You'll end up being a piece of bread. That's what the Lord is teaching us right there. So what must you do? Get Revelation 14 verse 4. This right here is the message to the black men, the leaders of Israel. Watch this. Revelation 14 verse 4. Book of Revelation chapter 14 verse 4. Go ahead. These are they which are not defiled with women, mm. for they are virgins. Come on. These are they which follow the Lamb whithersoever he goeth. Read. These were redeemed from among men, mm. being the first fruits unto God and to the Lamb. You see that these type of men right here is that these are they which were not defiled with women. Meaning what? They didn't fall for the Jezebel woman. They did not fall for that spiritual vampire. You understand? She didn't fall for that beautiful monster. She didn't, he didn't fall for that. Because these are men. It says, for they are virgins. Meaning what? They have repented. They are keeping God's commandments. You understand? Spiritually, they are virgins. It says, these are they which follow the lamb whithersoever he goeth. Whatever this Bible says do, these type of men, they are not going to make excuses. These were redeemed from among men, being the first fruits unto God and to the lamb. You see that? That's right there. So you brothers, you better pay attention to this thing. This is nation building time. We don't got time for shaking and jive. Understand that. I'm going to end the class right there. Okay, all praises to the Most High. Let's break bread. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Okay, for laying his life down for the 12 tribes of Israel. First book of Corinthians, chapter 11, verse 23. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed to bread, and when he had given thanks, he break it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also, he took the cup, and when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it, in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. In the name of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen.